وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين. To all the brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's good to see everybody in here. I'm more traveling streams and well, first before before we introduce, I want to make sure that everyone can see. Can I see the sword? Oh, this yes. This is a uh, custom made in Germany. And who's this for? Uh, buttering my toast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting some ones. Agdash Toast Eraser. I like... Uh, Good? I like my cream cheese evenly spread on my vehicle. <laughs> Very precise with it. This is from Germany? Yeah. You have a lot of weapons in, in this house, you know? Uh, Second Amendment. <laughs> Two. <laughs> the right to bear swords. So it's good to see everybody. Shake with mine. It's good to it's meet you in person. It's um, my pleasure. In your home from San Diego, and this is your library. Uh, we want to do a stream covering over all these books, but uh, I think first, you know, we just got to sit down. It's good to maybe get a little bit more backstory from you, uh, how you got to this point. I would say that you uh, really helped me get to the point of to take my shahada and refer to Islam. So how did you get into because? I mean, you don't do YouTube full time. You're not even a. You're not a content creator. Nope. But you, I would say, are a professional student of Islam. Alhamdulillah. That's, that's a good, that's way, to a good it. way to put it. That's a good way to put it. Professional student of Islam, and also uh, one of the most successful people in, at giving dawah. From what, from what I can see on the internet. We ask Allah to accept it from us. We ask Allah for sincerity, and we ask Allah to increase the dawah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, uh, I would say that by the will of Allah, and we thank Allah for it. Uh, we have had great success. Even as I was telling you yesterday, we had a brother come to the masjid, accept Islam. Today, we had two people accept Islam online from watching the videos. So, alhamdulillah, that was doing great. Um, myself, as you know, we were talking, uh, I don't get paid for doing da'wah. I don't get paid by the masjid. I don't take a penny from OMF. Uh, what I do is sincerely for my creator to accept from me. And I think that's one of the, the reasons for success is trying to keep it not about money or Patreons or trying to make a living off it, but trying to keep it sincerely for our creator and his pleasure. Because you don't even put ads on your videos. I was telling you that you should monetize it, but <laughs> the reason was is because you don't want to have music or any degenerate yeah. ads, gambling and alcohol, uh, exactly. directing people away from what you're trying to do. And even in your videos, you have... Uh, your team's all behind here, but uh, they all they have to blur out everybody in the background, like any girls that yeah. are in the back, but even just strangers. So you, you try to keep it, or I mean you do keep it as uh, professional as possible. We try our best to keep it 100% halal, and the whole point is that we're out there trying to call people to the purpose of their creation. We're not out there, you know, I'll tell you this funny story. When I first started giving da'wah, it was just me on the street, and we'll kind of talk about how that started. But once our brothers, may Allah reward our brother Mukarram, uh, you'll meet him tonight, he's the president of OMF, he started recording the videos and he wanted to post them. Uh, a, a YouTube Dai, Muslim, he reached out to me and he said, you know, we love what you're doing, but what you need to do is find the best looking girl that comes to your table that day, take a picture and use her in the thumbnail. Mm. And this is a Muslim Dai, and he does that, you know, unfortunately. And I was like, what? Like, like, I'm not trying to spread fitna here. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, get people to look at how skimply somebody's dressed at the park or the beach. I'm trying to bring the message of the creator to the people. So I said, if that's what it's about, we don't need views. We don't need any of that. We're just going to do what we need to do. Do our best with our shortcomings to 100% within the Quran and the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And then if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we started blurring, and it's my son Musa's right here, um, our brother Mawiyah right here, Yusuf. These guys volunteered a lot of time. It took a lot of effort to like go through frame by frame because people would move. But we did it because we want people to focus on the message and not be distracted by what people are wearing in the back and so on. But it grew, alhamdulillah. So how did you get started? What made? What's your, your backstory? You, I've seen you talk, and I think the, what makes you relatable to people and why you're able to get so many people to change their mind about um, about everything that they 
grew up with is that you have a sense of relatability. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot of uh, religious, uh, religious people who are trying to be relatable. And I think a lot of the, the Christians watching can relate to this, like someone who sits backwards in a chair and they, they just try to say, <laughs> they, they try to be like, like, I'm one of you, yeah. you, you know, it's, as kids, of, it's just, and it, it comes off corny, <laughs> but I can, I can tell that you have a background um, mm-hmm. in the streets. And yeah, so I think anybody that tries to be relatable, it kind of annoys me. Because <laughs> if you have to try, then it's not, it's not going to work, right? Right. There's a Christian preacher, you can see the video online. He's like an older white guy and he's out there trying to rap and he uses the N-word and he thinks that's the way he's going to relate. That's not the way it is. You just got to be real. You got to be who you are, right? I, I, I'm ethnically Afghan, Pashtun. I was born in Pakistan. I left when I was a little kid. Um, you know, I came to the U.S. when I was around eight, nine years of age. And where I grew up, it was a rough neighborhood. You know, it's called East San Diego. And it was, you know, when I got there, um, obviously being somebody of a different background in, a, in, in the ghetto, it wasn't easy. Um, the first day I went to school, uh, my mom sent me like a nice suit because she thought, you know, America and everybody's rich and like that. So imagine you're in the barrio in the ghetto and you go to school in a suit with that. And, and I came from the UK before this. So I had a British accent. I was like, hello. Oh, My name no. is Usman. Oh, no. <laughs> so the first day was fights. Right you try to turn back. the volume, but yeah. if there's any way to. But yeah, get in there. Yeah, so you know what we did is, uh, I mean, I just went into school and uh, the first day I got, I got, I got tested. And, and, you know, my father raised me with this mindset of never being afraid. He was a strong figure. My mother raised me with this, you know, idea of don't back down. So the first day was fights and I got back home. Suit was all ripped, clothes, big old black eye, you know. <laughs> My mom was like, what happened? I was like, you sent me to school in a suit, you know. This is welcome to America, right? right. So, you know. You lost the accent completely. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, growing up, just, you know, we kind of, I grew up with all Mexicans, mostly, you know. Because yeah. that neighborhood was heavily Latino. Chad, I want to show you the picture that uh, Sheikh Guzman sent me of him back in, what was it, the 80s or 90s? 95. You look like yeah, a Mexican 1994. dude. You yeah, look like yeah. a cholo, uh, stereotypical <laughs> beater from like the 90s movies in L.A. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up a little. If you can yeah. like clip that higher up, so closer to your. Yeah, I think that'd, that'd be better. Right. Yeah, that's good. All right, um, maybe here. Uh, here. No, um, like clip it to the oh, to okay. the best. There you go. So yeah, you were showing me some pictures. Like you're pointing the gun. How did you go from being like this gang member, California guy, so, boys in the hood, to? So the way it happened is I I had a friend. Uh, he was Iranian, but he was he was Christian. Um, and when I was about 12 years of age, uh, he got into a fight with these cholos. And these were like older, three big guys. So cholos, that's not a racial slur? No, that's a gang member. Okay, okay. Uh, Beaner's a racial slur. Oh, but, <laughs> yeah, no. uh, but we're in rubble, so it's all right. Yeah, right? It's okay. Um, w Beaners. We love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, cholos are this basically a name for Mexican gang members, right? Okay. Um, so these guys were gang members, and they, they got in a fight with him. I, you know, having this honor mindset, I jumped in for him, and he ran. <laughs> so I got jumped. You know? oh, no. And when I got jumped, uh, my father, my parents were divorced at the time. Uh, my parents were very secular. Like, they didn't raise me with, like, a religious mindset. Uh, my father came to see me, and my mom was freaked out. She was a great mother. She was worried. So uh, she told my father, look, he got in a fight. Look, he's, you know, this. Big old back eye, busted lip, all that, you know, so my father, he called me and he said, look, did you cry? I said, no. He said, did you run? I said, no. He said, that's all I care about. And he grabbed a baseball bat and he grabbed me and said, let's go find him. <laughs> and he used to have this Camaro, you know. So we're out there looking for these guys. With the baseball bat. With the baseball bat. And there's a, gangs always have places where they hang out. Like there's a corner, there's a street. Like in LA, you have a gang called White Fence because they used to hang out at a white fence, you know. We have a gang in San Diego called Red Steps because where they hung out were Red Steps, you know. So these guys uh, from a gang called Lomas here in San Diego, uh, my father found them, and my father was like, that's the guys, you know, and my father pulled up, he got out of the bat, he hit one of them, broke the other guy's shoulder, you know, hit the other guy on the head. So, you know, we got him, but then my father went back to his house, and I had to go to school the next day. Right. So at 12 years of age, you know, I, I went to school, and they were like, bro, that gang's going to kill you, and there's no way you're going to live through this, right? So another gang called Eastside San Diego, here in San Diego, it's called Sureños, like Southern Mexican gangs. They were like, look, if you want to survive, you join us, we'll protect you. you know? So that's how I got in. I mean, was, I wasn't trying to be cool. I wasn't trying to fit in. I wasn't doing it for it was protection. clout. 
I had to, either survival, right? So at 12 years of age, I joined a gang. And then, you know, in the gang world, you know, especially if you can plan things well, if you can do things, you move up fast, right? So we were all young guys, uh, you know, East San Diego is around 600 people strong gang. Uh, it's still around. I mean, I don't, I don't keep up with them. Uh, but we got into a lot of stuff. I mean, we started dealing with the cartels. So, you know, Tijuana's right next to us. So we would go down to TJ and meet with the cartel guys. And, you know, I don't want to get myself too much in trouble. But, right. you know, we got involved with bringing drugs and distribution. So you matured pretty quickly. You yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it was, a, it was rough. Um, I had a lot of friends. I had a very good friend of mine that I grew up with here in Hoover High School. Um, this gang member from LA came down. So, you know, we were San Diegans. We didn't like LA. LA didn't like us. So, and he was, you know, he was alone. So, we were like, let's go mess with him, you know. So, the guy started beating him up after school. And I was like, yeah, he's just one guy. Forget it, you know. So, one of my friends started, like, really getting into him with him. So, he started running. So, my friend, his name was Diablo. They called him Diablo. We started chasing him. And the guy turned around and just stuck him with a screwdriver in the chest. And I remember... You know, watching them run, the guy running him, and then I just remember, like, the guy turned, and then I saw my friend just drop. And I ran up there, um, you know, and um, I picked him up, and he was bleeding out, you know. And uh, he died right, right there in my arms. Um, like that, I mean, that's why, like, I tell the young guys, you know, the gang world that you see on TV is not the reality, right? We would, we would go through some stuff, you know, stuff that I never talked about for many years because it's rough. You know, we, we used to go to the cartel guys, and I remember till today, um, I went on the, the base, you know, they have their own compounds, and there's a smell, you know, and I, I couldn't place what that smell was. And basically, they had these big drums where they would put a person in there and light them up and burn them up alive. And when you smell that smell, uh, you'll never forget it, you know. So, it got involved with a lot of really, really, you know, we, we, we regularly, you know, we'd be in school and I was trying to get good grades, you know, because my parents always had this idea. And then you'd be sitting there, another gang, 30, 40, 60 guys would just rush to school. Security couldn't do anything. My middle school had a police officer that was there full time, middle school. We had metal detectors. Uh, it's called Wilson Middle School in San Diego. And middle school, this is 6th, 7th, 8th, there was a drive-by during school time. And that's the kind of environment I grew up with. Were, were you still Muslim at the time, or did you have? Did you leave? I, I don't, I, how did those two things I never left coexist? Islam. Uh, I was Muslim in the sense that my parents told me you're Muslim, but we weren't practicing in the sense, I mean, you know, we didn't really pray regularly, we didn't fast regularly. Uh, I didn't go to any mosques. I didn't have any Muslim friends or community. Or all my friends were not Muslim. Um, I went to church regularly, uh, but I never went to a mosque growing up. And the reason I went to church because most Mexicans are either Catholic or some Christian. So a lot of times the parents would put us in these Bible studies to try to fix us. You know, so I still remember going to a confession. You know, because we used, a lot of my friends were Catholic. So you'd go in and it'd be like. You go into this little room and this guy would be, you know, behind the mesh and he'd be like, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. You know, I stabbed the guy last week. And, and then he forgive you. So then, then the funny thing is that they would be like, oh, well, say these many Hail Marys, donate, and don't do it again. And he'd be like, you know we're going to do it again. We're gang members. This is what we do, right? right. And he'd be like, well, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> like you're yeah. forgiven, you know? You walk out, you're like, oh, I'm done. Let's go kidnap somebody yeah, else. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did notice that, that type of sen sentiment from... Christians recently is that they they feel like they can sin however they want to and then you just ask for forgiveness and then everything is forgiven That's not the same in Islam. But no, Alhamdulillah in Islam we strive to be the best we can We know we all have imperfections. We ask Allah for forgiveness, but we don't just say okay uh, I believe in Jesus. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I can do whatever I want and that's the mindset and that mindset is a hypocritical mindset even growing up I would talk to preachers and priests. I used to go to a place called Horizon Church. It's a, a Christian study group. And on Wednesdays, we had a youth group, and I used to study the Bible with them. And all these guys were gang members, right? So they would be out there trying to chase girls during the Bible studies, smoke <laughs> weed, get things in the bushes that I don't want to yeah, get yeah. into details about. But right. I was actually sitting there, and I'm, I'm not Christian, but I'm sitting there actually paying attention to the Bible studies. And I would ask questions, and they would kick me out. 
Because I'd be like, well, so I mean, if Jesus died for my sins, then I can do whatever, right? Because um, salvation is free, right? right? And they're like, yeah. And, and I'm like, oh, I guess if, if I mean Hitler and all of them are going to heaven then, right? Like, no, don't say that. Well, he believed in Jesus, right? I mean, so why, why didn't Jesus die for his sins, you know? And then they would just be like, get out. <laughs> so, so you have a long history of having these types of debates. Well, and I mean, at that time, I wasn't trying to debate. I just wanted to learn. You just wanted to know. Yeah. You are just genuinely I mean, curious. My Bible, uh, you used to find me the Bible. You know the Bible more than most Christians, if you see the way this is marked up. This was a... Uh, so this is the Bible I used yeah. to use for my own study. Yeah, can I, I show, can I show the it. chat? Look how marked up this Bible is, chat. This is the one I always see you carrying around in your videos. and This is my famous or infamous, depending which side you're looking at it from. Yeah, so this Bible, I started studying just for myself. So basically, I would go through and during Bible studies, I would highlight things. I would put little stickies and things. That's why you see they're all different colored and things because it's over years and years and years, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's grown since then. But I, I just wanted to know if this is the truth. And when I would find clear contradictions when I would find things that I found to be not in line with Christian doctrine, I would ask. And almost every Bible studies I went to, I got kicked out. Just for asking questions, you know. In Islam, we're open to questions. Ask questions, you know. If you want to learn, if you're sincere, ask all the questions you like. In Islam, we don't believe in this idea that, okay, Jesus died for, for your sins, so salvation is free, do whatever you want. No. You have to strive and struggle to be the best Sneeko, the best Uthman, the best Muhammad that you can be. And again, your shortcomings will be forgiven by the mercy of God, no doubt. But you have to try, right? So we don't believe in this idea, you know, because all my friends were gang members. They were, they'd, they'd go to confession, they'd come out, they're like, hey, I'm, I'm free from all my sins, I'm good, let's go do whatever else this weekend, you know? And that mindset kept us in that filth, you know? So I had a lot of friends that got killed. A lot of friends. I mean, shot, stabbed, hit in the head with, you know, crowbars, cracked heads. You know, the 90s, the 80s and 90s in Southern California was like war zones. You can talk about Ice Cube. He talks about, he goes, hell, is LA in the uh, 80s or 90s. I forgot the rhyme, but, right? Because the gang culture was really, I mean, it was, it was drive-bys all the time, shootouts. And we were, we got into like dealing with the Mexican mafia, the cartels, the Sureños. So, you know, there were, there were hits that were going to come down from prison, like you got to go kill this guy and all that kind of stuff. But when I was 18, um, I had a very close friend, somebody I grew up with. Um, he was two years older than me. And I grew up with him like he was a very, like, like, I know he was a gang member, he killed people, but he was a really nice guy. You know, <laughs> Like, he was a nice person. You know, I, I remember him really well. I remember his family. And, you know, we used to have this place where the gang would hang out in the garage, right? And nobody could go in the house except family. It was very respectful, right? But he would, like, if I spend the night, he would ask me to go in the house. Like, even though there was nobody, nobody else was allowed. He was like that close. I mean, I knew him since eighth grade, right? So imagine how close we were. And there was a girl I met at a party, and she gave me a number, and she told me, hey, you know, give me a call, right? And at that time, we had pagers, you know, so I'm kind of dating myself. It's very 90s, yeah. All right, that's enough. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, bro. <laughs> Trying to make you feel old? Nah. Um, so, you know, they would page you, and you would go to a payphone, and you'd be like, yo, I'm here, and then she would take you wherever. A to payphone, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah, I get it. Boomer. Yeah. <laughs> boomer, I'm before boomers. So you're or after boomers, I'm not boomer. Yeah, you're, what are you, Gen X? I don't know. Well, some, you, you have a, a long history. I, I can tell you've always been somebody who wants to seek truth. Yeah. And um, very open-minded when it comes to discussion. Uh, people in the chat are asking specifically, I don't know if you want me to name drop these people, but they're asking me, like, why don't you debate um, uh, Sam Schumann, for example? So Sam Schumann, he, he came out to debate us. Uh, the video is online. Uh, check the One Message Foundation channel. You can see it, um, you know, go check it. Yeah, clack five. Uh, w Shake W Seco chat who is Sam Schumer. Yeah, there's a lot of Christians who are saying debate him. But so you, you did debate look, him, actually. Let, let me uh let me let me answer this and then I'll finish the story. Um David Wood, Sam Shimon, Anthony Rogers came out to debate me at the park. I wasn't there to debate. I didn't even know they were coming. The video is online, the full video on our channel, One Message Foundation, you can watch it. David Wood you can see him get disgraced. You can see Anthony Rogers fall apart. You can see Sam Shimon run away like a little coward. 
He can talk brave when he's sitting in his bathroom at home or online behind a screen. When he came out, there's a part when I even told him, Sam, come talk to us. And he came a little bit and then he just snuck away, right? When he's in person, he was nothing but hugs and, oh, you know, uh, I respect you and all this, right? When he goes in his bathroom, he calls people's mother's names and stuff. We as Muslims would never use. You Christians want to have him represent you? He calls mother, people's mothers whores. That's a representation of Christ you want? Pretty pathetic. He has no formal education in Christianity or anything else. But anyway, if he wants to debate, he knows where I'm at. Tell him, come. He came before. You can watch the video of how he did in front of me. So, go watch it. You yeah. will debate anybody. 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 That's anybody. how I first met you. I met you Look. last year, and you were in the park with your kid. <laughs> and I was on a giant panel, like a giant religious yeah. debate. And you're like, hey, let's sit just on Look, your phone in the park. Last Sunday, I was at Balboa Park. We go out to the park. My sons were with me. And anybody that steps up. David Wood came out, I think, what, five times or six times? Anytime. They don't even need to give us a heads up. I'm good. You know, if I'm not traveling, I'm there. They can walk up. I'll debate them on any subject, atheist, Christian, Hindu, I don't care, right? I'm not there to debate. I'm not a debater. I'm there to give da'wah. I'm there to call people toward the purpose of their creation, towards the truth, to worship that one true God, that Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon all of them, the one that they worshipped, I call towards that God. That's what I'm there for. But if anybody wants a debate, we're ready to end anybody's career at any time. The princess, Christian princess, I'm challenging you right now. You name a place and time. Come face to face. Don't be a coward. If you're scared, I'll get you a little niqab, a little face covering, so you can keep your little pretty face off the line. Come debate me. I'm not scared. We're in a Catholic country, right? It's not mm. a Muslim country. No. I go out. I've been attacked repeatedly. You can see the videos online. I'm still not scared. Last Sunday, I was at Bell Ball Park, right? Why is he scared? Why is he scared to show his face? You guys could talk all this stuff. This guy is such a coward. Such a coward. Somebody else called his show and he's like putting me in the thumbnail. Sheikh Uthman called some guy named Khaled or Bilal. Why would I call your show and not even give my name? Right? I was in Medina at the time, right? right? These guys are such cowards. They'll have somebody else, they'll put my name in the thumbnails. right? I'm there at Balboa Park. Come see me. Princess. Shimon. Anybody else. Who's Princess? Uh -uh. Don't worry Whatever. about it. It's well, a, that's what I really it's, like. It's a that... coward that won't show his face. Is that it's Maybe you're on a sex registry or something. I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. I'll debate you in front of a school. How's that? See if you can get there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very clearly not about clout or you're, you're not trying to... You don't care if you lose your channels. It's all about giving dawah. That but, is the, and that's why everything works so well for you is that there's no other challenge. motivations. David Wood, anybody else, Shimon, cancel your Patreons. Don't take a penny from your churches. Don't make money off your hate. Don't make money off your lies, and then come to me. The number one super chatted channels, are, I think in the top five, are Christian preachers. They make a lot of money profiting off of uh, reading the Bible. See, this is the thing. I don't get a paid a penny. Not a cent. Not yeah. a cent from either OMF or the masjid. I work a regular job. I go out in the morning. I work a job. I earn my risk. Alhamdulillah. I thank Allah for it. So I challenge any of them to do the same. They're not going to. It's all about lies. It's all about making money. They, they, they talk all this stuff online. When they were in, Sam Shimon was in front of me, he was like a little kitten. He ran away. Go watch the video. Right. So everybody in the chat, stop saying debate him, debate him. He no, will. He'll no, debate no, no. anybody anytime anywhere. Go tell wears. Sam to come face me face to face again. Go tell your princess to come out of hiding and come face well, him they're, like they're, a man. Well, they're telling me. They're saying debate these people. He will. <laughs> like you, guys, you can stop saying that in the chat now. Look, I already did. Go yeah. watch the video. Right. <laughs> Go to the One Message Foundation channel. Watch the video of all three of them, and you can see the whole debate, and you can see how Sam didn't say a word. In face-to-face, -face, he's that kind of a coward. Bruh. So, I've even seen that uh, you, you get it, you get attacked a lot. Or, yeah. I, I wouldn't say, but you, people have sent you messages like, can you tell that story again? You were, yeah. you were giving Dawa in the park, and then somebody left a message on your car threatening you, and that's why you're here in this... It's it's pretty cool to see you have all these guns, all legal, of course. You have all these swords. You're, you're, you're ready for any situation. Ready. Yeah. So uh, this is one of the times where I was out there. Uh, my son Yusuf was with me. I think Musa was there as well. Uh, we pulled up. to the And again, these guys, when they come to debate, they don't give us a heads up, right? They, any subject, they research, they spend all this time. And then they ambush. And they still get destroyed. <laughs> the truth can never be hid. It's not because I'm good at debating. It's because Allah gives Nusra, gives help to the truth. 
So we pulled up and we saw these guys and we knew all right, this, they're here. And there's a guy, especially we know who it is. He was looking at us pulling into the park, right? So we parked and he quickly ran to go tell them. So he went in. We did our, what we do is we go to our table, we give our dawah. We don't, we don't go out there and try to, you know, have videos or content. We just give dawah. We record it for the benefit of people. So David Wood came during the debate. When we pulled up, it was all good, right? Started debating. During the debate, I sent Yusuf to go get some water from the car. When he went with some brothers, there was a note that his people that were there had stuffed in the handle. And this was there because when we got there, it wasn't there. So it was put in by the people that were with him at that time. What did it say in the note? It said, uh, I mean, it's online, but Sheikh Uthman, uh, and they misspelled my name. Uh, Stop Dawa, and they misspelled it. Uh, or, I don't know, whatever, some kind of threat. And it was like, we know your car, we know your house, you know. And and it was it was found while David was there. So it's not like they can try to act like, oh, you know, who put it. So we found it, and we brought it, and David even read it, you know. And I ripped it up and I threw it and let him do whatever you want. After that, we got attacked at the park and it's on video by a guy with a baton and a knife. And, you know, I was giving that out to these people who believe in a Korean Jesus. <laughs> you know? And this guy comes and he starts, you know, cursing Islam, making fun of Allah, making fun of the prayer and stuff like this. And this guy had been at the park before. We knew who he was, but, you know, he's whatever. He tried to get all crazy. And I was giving the videos online, by the way, you can, anybody can watch it. Uh, it was recorded because we were at the park. And, you know, during the debate, this guy's, you know, yapping away over there. And I'm trying to talk to this couple that believes in a Korean Jesus. <laughs> What's wrong with Korean serious. Jesus? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't remember the last time Koreans were in the Middle East. You know? uh. <laughs> I don't know how he became Korean. But, you know, I mean, like, obviously the Prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, is from Al-Quds, you know, from... The area of uh, Palestine, you know, currently, uh, may Allah free it, but, um, but I don't know how he returned as a Korean man. Like, I don't know how that happened, you know, and, and he's just, he's already dead. Like, I don't know what happened to the whole second coming and stuff that didn't come true. But anyway, so during this, this guy's yapping. And then when I finished, I went at him. I ran at him. I'm like, hit me. He's like, I'm going to clobber. I'm going to hit you. I'm like, hit me. I'm not scared of these guys. I've been through worse. I've been shot at. I've been, you know, attacked before and back in the old days. And if I was willing to take that risk for a gang, a name, why would I be afraid for the sake of Allah, for the truth? I'm not scared of these guys. They can try. They've tried all kinds of things. This guy, when I ran at him, he runs away. <laughs> I turn around. You can watch the video, right? I turn around and he comes at me from the back. When I turn around, he runs away again. You know? And the police was called and he was arrested. You know, uh, these guys are cowards, you know. Look, my friend that I grew up with, the, the girl that called me, another girl had called me, so I went to go see the other one. I gave this number to one of my friends. He went there, and it was a setup for me. They meant to kill me, right? When he got to the payphone and he made that call, they... People came out from every side. They blasted him nine shots, including 357 to the head. Head blown off. He died in my place. That was supposed to be me. So you think these guys are going to scare me? I've seen that. I buried him. And when I buried my friend, that day when I put him down in the ground, and he was Catholic, he was not Muslim, I saw in his face this fear. And this was a brave guy. And I realized that life is not about money and fame because we had it. I mean, I don't make money off that one. So at that time, we made money. You know, and we were teenagers, right? So, I mean, we couldn't put it in a bank. <laughs> we just waste it. So, you know, we had everything, you know, the cool clothing. Because I grew up poor and I grew up struggling. But at that time, with all the drug money and stuff, we had money. We had girls. And you could, you could go to school and just be like, her, her. You know, like that's because you're up there... People want that clout. We had fame. You know, I had a gang name. I would walk into school. You mentioned the name. People know who it is. Till today, they're, 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 they're you know, Flickr pages and, and Twitter pages that talk about what happened to... And I'm not going to mention the name, but, you know, what my old gang name was and stuff. So, with all of that, I saw him being buried. He was 20 years old. And I saw that nothing went in the grave with him. Not his money. Not his fame. Not his girlfriends. We had a 64 Impala at the time. We had pulled our money. He had hydraulics and all that. 
somebody else was driving his car. Every girl, he had, he had mad girls. Like he had kids from all these girls. Every one of them was crying on some other guy's shoulder. She went to home with somebody else that night. That day, you know, his brothers were fighting over his clothes. We had these jackets called Ben Davis's. It was like this gangster thing at the time. He was like, that's mine. I was like, it's mine. He had money, you know, we used to put on place in the house, already gone. So I said, you know what? Life has to have a purpose other than this. This can't be it, right? And when I, when I brought that mindset, I went on a journey to try to find the truth, right? Even though I was raised from a Muslim household, I didn't want to just be like, okay, Islam because of that. I studied, I had already studied the Bible, but I studied more. I went to Baptist churches. I went to uh, Mormon temples. I went to Kingdom Halls. I went to Jewish, you know, Beth El. And I went to Hindu places. I went to Hare Krishna. I went to everything. And I tried to get the literature of every religion that I could to study the truth. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I, I asked the questions from every way. Nobody had answers except Islam. You know, when I would ask, like, how could Jesus be God and he's worshiping God? How could Jesus be the only way to salvation when there were prophets before him that didn't even know who he was? Right? And from that, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me to Islam. And then I said, I'm going to become a Muslim and I'm not going to half step it. No such thing as a halfway crook, but there's no such thing as a halfway Muslim. You got to try your best, you know. So I wanted to seek knowledge. I wanted to learn Arabic and I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything. I couldn't read Arabic. I couldn't do any of that. So I went back to the basics, right? And I started to study and Alhamdulillah, I went overseas. I went to the UAE. I lived there. I quit my job. I never took a penny from anybody. No scholarships, no loans. Yeah, people, there's this conspiracy theory that Sneeko uh, reverted to Islam because he's getting money from some sheikhs and he's making money. He's making Saudi oil money is funding his... Uh, <laughs> I mean, selfishly, like, if they would offer me money to talk about take this, <laughs> I would take it. I mean, yeah, I don't know if that like, makes me a bad person, but if they if they want to give me millions of dollars to do this, but I do this because I just, I, I'm seeking truth. And same reason why honest, I found you in the first place. Christians would pay you a lot more money, you know? To promote it? 700 Club, the, the Christian organizations. How much does David Wood make? You know, I, for, 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 yeah, I don't really know. This I have people. an idea, but I'm not going to talk about it, right? He knows, right? They make mad money off this stuff, right? right. Islamophobia is the way to make money. Mm -hmm. But hell's hot, so you better, you better watch yeah. that, right? Um, and you're being uh, profiled and I would say attacked a lot. People are coming at you not just from, from the debate angle, but you're getting like threats on your, lot, on your life, which is crazy to see because somebody's not even doing this as, as a full-time. You just do this part-time and see yeah. how active you are in it. That blew my mind that you work a regular job. You were telling me that uh, after that threat happened, you posted a picture out with the, at the current like Malcolm X, I had well, an AR-15 in it. Yeah, had an AR-15. He's peeking out the window. Illegal. Illegal, of course. Uh, nothing, nothing happened. But who gave you a call after you posted that picture? So actually, even before that, one time when when David Wood had come out for a debate, uh, I got a call from the FBI. I actually made a video after it to address it as well. And they were, you know, they were basically saying that there was a complaint made that I was making terrorist threats at Balboa Park. And I told him, look, everything I said is recorded. The video's online, you can watch it. And the funny thing is, the FBI guy afterwards, when he called me, he was like, you know what, I think they were just sore losers. <laughs> you know? So, you know, it kind of... So the FBI over. called you? Yeah, th this was before. When I posted that video, also we got the FBI, I mean, they came to my house before. The FBI came to your house? Yeah, yeah. They Even, knocked on your door, feds? They knocked my How many guys? My were, it was two of them. One guy, one woman. What were they dressed? Oh, a woman? Yeah. They allow them? <laughs> what the? <laughs> the FBI? You're about to get me banned. No, no, I was just surprised. <laughs> Wait, okay, yeah, so they're... what were they dressed up? Did they have like the earpiece and the shades? What? what nah, is... they were wearing suits and stuff, but no, no earpieces, no. A shades woman wearing a suit? Yeah. Wow. Uh, woman suits. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, and then what was the conversation like? They showed up at your yeah. house because of that picture. Yeah, and they asked me about it, and I told them, "Look, you know, it's, it's a legal weapon, and you know, I, I'm within my rights." And and at that time, then I started getting uh, put in secondary all the time. You know, when I was flying, I would, I would get put in secondary all the time. You know, I was randomly chosen for right. secondary. What did they think you, you think they thought you were some an ISIS know. or something? I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. If a white guy, some Christian dude posts a video with an AR-15, then he's just practicing his rights. So a Muslim does it, then it's a threat. Right. You know? If some... Yeah, what year was that? Uh, because so many people, I see so many pictures of people with uh, AK-47s so, and AR-15s. 2021. 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2
Yeah, 2020. 2020 they definitely profile for different reasons other than... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not scared of any of it, you know, but obviously, look, I fly for work sometimes. I do audits and things like this, and, and it got to be a nuisance, you know, but it, look, there are prophets before me that, that showed a great path for us of people that, you know, attacked them and, and they were patient. And there were Salihin, pious people, after the prophets, like the Sahaba, who were killed for speaking the truth. So I'm not scared about it. But it's just, it's just sad to me. And, and there's a video where Sam actually is telling people, you need to call the FBI on this guy. Because they can't debate me. That, that's the thing, right? They're gonna, there's people right now, I got, I got stabbed later. I haven't told you that story yet. You got there, stabbed? Yeah, <laughs> in San Diego, you know. But there are people trying to file, like, Freedom of Information Act. They're trying to get my address through other ways. I mean, I meet with the police. We have a good relationship. You know, we, we sit down, we talk, and, and they're, they're, we get threats at our mosque and in the recordings. We've had all of that. They're going to try every which way to shut me down because you can see, and again, we record full postings. I mean, when there's a debate, the full thing is posted. If it's too long, we put it in two parts, but it's on there. You can see them fall apart. Even... I mean, and this is, this is, this is uh, an accreditation. I'm giving a shout out to young Don. The first time we spoke, and I was at the park with my, my son Musa actually, and you know, the three Muslims, they, they hit me up and we got on that uh, stream. And young Don at that time was, was he was kind of aggressive, you know, he was a little bit taken back, you know. And the shout out that now, I saw a video from him where he used the exact same verse that I quoted to him that day to say that he doesn't believe Jesus is God anymore. Right. right. So, he's saying he's a Pharisee. He told me he's not even a Christian. Really? He, he, he himself, Young Don says, I'm not, a, I'm not considered a Christian because Christians are confused. And it's, it's basically, in my opinion, it sounds like he's one step before Young taking Don, Shahada. Holler at your brother. Look, well, you know, when you're ready for your Shahada, we're ready. Any questions you got, we can do it offline. We're not trying to do this for views. No. We're ready to help you out, man. And, and, and again, I want to shout out Young Don and appreciate the fact that he was brave enough and honest enough to come out and say what the truth is, that Jesus is not God. He is not the one true God that he worshipped himself. So this is the thing. When you go into, and then recently you can watch the One Message Foundation, you'll see that we just posted some videos. You know, it was three preachers in Balboa Park last Sunday. Some of these guys, when I'm traveling, this is another cowardly thing these guys do. When I'm traveling, they're like, oh, he's run away. He's not in Balboa Park. Yeah, because I'm in the UK. I'm in Canada, bro. When I'm in San Diego and I'm at Balboa Park, you see them quiet, you know. <laughs> they're all talk. They're all yeah. talk, yeah. So what was the story of you getting stabbed? What happened so, there? I went uh, to my dentist, actually. It wasn't at the park. And I was dressed just like this, wearing white. You know, this is the way I dress in you the street. You stabbed the dentist? No, no, no. So it's a story. <laughs> so I was at the dentist. I came out, downtown San Diego. And as I was going, this guy was like yelling all this stuff at me. He was driving by. I was like, what? I was like, get down and talk to me, you know? The guy kept driving. I'm like, whatever. So I get in my car, I start driving. The guy busts a U, right? He comes after me. So he's behind me and he's talking all this stuff. So I pull over because I'm not, I don't like, I don't like to bark. I'm ready to bite, but I'm not a barker, right? So I'm like, look, if you got something to say, say it to my face. Let's do this, right? So I pulled. The guy kept going. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I keep going. I go. Then I'm, he goes on past. I'm like, all right, he's gone. I go to get some gas. This guy pulls back. So I pull out of the gas station. I pull up. And I'm like, look, you got something to say. Say it to my face. So this guy jumps out. And he starts. And I record it on my phone. Because the reason I recorded too, because we weren't recording. It wasn't that one. The reason I recorded because I knew that if something happened, the police would arrest me. You know, I'd be the one that'd be like in trouble. Because, you know, they're always going to blame me. So I was like, I'm going to record that this guy's coming. So I recorded him. And he comes, and this video is online, and he starts talking all this stuff. And I toss my camera, I go out, we get into it, and I got him. You know, I punched him, he got him. You know, he was this big guy. And during the struggle, the guy pulls out a knife, I didn't see it, and he's, he slices me. Instantly, alhamdulillah, I was holding his, his knife, you know, I was holding his hand, so he couldn't get like a good jab, but he sliced me. And, you know, right afterward, when I realized this guy stabbed me, I was like, oh, this guy, you know. So I grabbed his knife, he ran away. I, I drove myself, you know, and I was bleeding at the time. To the hospital. Yeah. So I went to the hospital. Alhamdulillah, I gave the knife, you know, all of that to the police. Because, you know, it was a stabbing. They had to call the police. And, you know, they patched me up. Alhamdulillah. Right afterwards, from the hospital, I went to go pick up my son from school. <laughs> you know, I was already patched up. And I was like, I called him, like, yo, get out of school. And he was like, what? <laughs> and you'll see a picture he took, you know, and I got stabbed. But, uh, you know, so I picked him up. 
came home, but I was just, I was drained, you know. But, alhamdulillah, we met with the police. That guy also got arrested. You know, uh, a lot of people have tried to figure out, you know, timings and all of that to try to get, you know, because if, if it was self-defense or not. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. I didn't get arrested. He did. It, it is self-defense. He came at me. So, we're good, you know. The Why whole, did he have a disagreement with you? What, no, what, he, he watched the videos. He was mad. He, in the video, you, I'll show you the clip. You know, he'll be like, I'm an infidel. Come do something. I see your videos. You know, he was he was mad because they lose the debates. That's that's the whole point is these guys, they can't, they can't have a conversation. So they get violent, right? For us, uh, like even at Balboa Was he a Park, Christian? He was Christian, yeah. Wow. And interesting, he didn't have a record. He what? He didn't have a record. Oh. So that's why when they were first got the fingerprints. So he was so night. mad yeah. about your videos. Yeah. So stop saying like debate, debate, debate. You clearly will. Look, that, <laughs> you, that, that, you clearly that, will. I, I go out to the park and I stand there. Anybody can walk up to me, right? And they have every major Christian apologetic whatever that is brave enough has come out and our go to the One Message Foundation channel, look at the videos and you can see them. Sam, Anthony. Hammer time, all those guys are out there. Would you let the stabby guy take his shahada with you? I would. With no resentment? No resentment. That's next level. Because that's why he's so upset, is that he started to question his entire worldview. And instead of admitting that he could have been wrong or trying to question it, he has to stab you for telling the truth. You know, this is the same thing that we see from a lot of the people that... You, you'll see the videos. The regular, the Christian apologists... When they when they lose, they get angry. You'll see the video. They'll, they'll be recording. They'll be like, yeah, record. And then when they're losing, they're like, turn off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, now nah, you don't want to turn it off in the beginning. We ain't turning off now. You know? All right. uh, recently, we just posted a video from last Sunday from Balboa Park. We had this Christian guy come. And I'm talking to him. And I'm showing him the Bible verses. And he lies. Straight up. He's lying about he, the Bible. He's lying. He, he, goes, he goes, because it's a verse, which is the one thing when we quoted to Don... Uh, young Don, you know, which was that, uh, you know, that Jesus here says that they, that they may get to know you, eternal life, and they may get to know you, the only true God, you. Now, as you know, uh, even the, the Christian guy tried to be like, you don't know English, you know, I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, you're trying to take shots here, huh? But he goes, a pronoun in English, I mean, I know we're in California and all that, but pronouns still exist, right? If Jesus was saying me, he would say I, get to know me, or we. He didn't, he said you. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Right? It's very clear. It's in the Bible right here, right? Now, this guy's telling me it says even Jesus Christ. Like, what? I've read this verse like a million times, but what are you talking about? Like, look at it, you know? And then he gets caught lying right there, and then you see him start getting angry, right? And then he repeats that again and again, right? He changes right in front of me, right? And the video's online. It's not like it's not like it's my word again. You watch it yourself, right? So when people are unable, even atheists, a lot of atheists lose their temper because they take evolution and they take these ideas to be facts when they're not. And when you challenge it, when you mention the minimum gene concept, because I work in the med device industry, I deal with clinical trials all day long. I'm all pro science, right? But if you really take science, th these are all theories. They're not facts. They're they're changing. They're things that are wrong. You know, so when you when you give them facts like the minimum gene concept that prove that the first living cell had to have had a minim, minimum set of genetics, that means it could not have evolved by itself. When you give those facts, like this is something you can prove in a clinical trial, then you just see them get angry, oh, you know. And they're like, look, it's not about getting angry. Let's sit and talk calmly. Let's bring your evidences, right? Regularly in my videos you'll watch, I'm like, okay, I'll let you speak, and then you let me speak. But as soon as I start speaking, they'll interrupt because their mind's like... Red flag! You know, our, our our whole belief system is being destroyed, destroyed, eject, eject you. So that is what it is. Yeah, I really like your temperament in debates. It's just like they try to get you on their level of anger and arguing and me versus you. Be like, I'll talk, and then you talk. Yeah. It's the best way to frame any conversation because people used to they have all these tactics for how they can win, but you don't you don't really think of it as winning. You just think of it it's as not, telling people the truth. Look, if you're right. Then why would I want to defeat you? I want to agree with you. You want to get to the then. truth too. Yeah. Right. If you're right, let me agree with you. Mm -hmm. If I'm right, you follow what's right, right? I didn't start out with okay, I'm a Muslim. I'm going to debate. No, I wanted to, to, to find truth. the truth. Yeah. And when right. I found Islam, 
We get all these people online, oh, there's contradictions in the Quran, contradictions. Bring them! I have put this challenge out for what? I don't know how many years we've been out there, there right? No the I've Quran. said, if you can bring me one clear, actual contradiction in the Quran, I'll leave Islam in front of you. Right? All these guys, that, that, there's that dude that comes out to the park now, he brought all these printouts, you know? And every one of them, I explained it, and they're, they're so simple. Like, for example, uh, they bring this one, which is such a funny one. They said, I Ibrahim, in the Quran, says, I am the first of the believers. Right? And then he says, the Prophet Muhammad, well, he was the first of believers. So who's the first? No, no. This is like saying, if I say, hey, man, let's give some charity. You're like, I'm first in line. I'm ready to give charity. That doesn't mean that nobody's ever given charity before you. Right? Uh, so, these aren't contradictions. That, that's just not understanding language. A contradiction is something like this, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Someone's stabbing so. their webcam right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, read for me. Okay. Highlighted in blue. This is one of the ones we see. This is uh, what chapter? This is Second Kings. And then the chapter here is... Can you read that? Second Kings, chapter 8. Uh, verse. verse 26. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. No, I want you to continue because it also mentions more about him. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Omri, king of Israel. Okay, so the reason I told you to continue is many Christians will say, oh, it's a different person. But I want you to remember the mother and the grandfather. Okay. okay? Same Bible, except now we're in Second Chronicles 22, 2. 22 verse 2. Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Omri. So same, 22 or 42? That is a contradiction. And this is only a couple pages ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's same, same Bible, same King James. How did they get the... That's a pretty major error. <laughs> it is. And they even specify that... You know, can you hand me the M uh, McCarthy Study Bible right there on the bottom? Some of the Christian apologists that came out, they're the ones that brought this, and that's why I bought it, you know? So, I study the Christian study Bibles, you know? So, it's not like I don't know their stuff, you know? So, they will say... Definitely knows it. This is, again, this is a Christian apologist, you know, the uh, evangelical study Bible, and they will say this is a print error. This is a copyist error. Right? 42. This is a copyist error easily made due to the small stroke that differentiates. So they're admitting that there's an error in the Bible. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's not like this in, in one manuscript or something. This is the printed. It's been more than, what, you know, 15, 1600 years right. of Bibles being printed. And this error is right there. So it hasn't been preserved the same way the Quran is. That's it why. Has I like, not. What's not the even... word for the for the children who memorize the Quran? Hafal, people who Hufal. memorize the Quran. Shout out to Salim the Dream. I would love to to get you to to come back to Islam. Uh, he he's one of the uh, Hafiz is the word. Yeah. Hafiz. Yeah. They they've memorized the Quran because they they're they're seen as the the protectors of the Quran. So that they to make sure that it's never manipulated. Mashallah. And then even then, like I've I've spoken to sheikhs and they they tell me to not read the Quran yet to learn directly from people who have learned from the Prophet, peace be upon him, directly, and so that you don't misinterpret anything and nothing gets changed, nothing gets altered, because there are a lot of metaphors, and there are, sure. are, are a lot of things that you can misinterpret, but it's extremely important to go directly to the text and exactly what it does mean, so that you don't have uh, errors like this. Well, Alhamdulillah in Islam, I'm going to show you something. Can you hand me this one? Yeah. Uh, I want to show you, let bring it, yeah. We'll put it here real quick. Um, I'll show you that in a second, but... This is something, this is in the Christian study Bible, okay? So this is an apologetic, this is not a Muslim book or any of that kind of stuff. The chapter called Hebrews, what does it say who wrote it? The author of Hebrews is unknown. They're admitting they don't know who wrote they it. They don't even know who wrote it. Right. How do you know it wasn't a, a rapist, a murderer, you know what I mean? Right? You don't even know who wrote it, right? Even the famous Gospels, you will find that their authorship is unknown. Right? You know, uh, can you hand me that book that says Luke? Yeah, right there. This is a Christian PhD preacher, professor who wrote this. This library is incredible to have all this, all these texts in here. We've got all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Right? Read what it says. Okay. The book is called um, Osberg Commentary in the New Testament. This narrative remains an anonymous ancient document of uncertain origin. This is about this. This whole book is written about just about Luke, by a Christian PhD 
I looked him up, you know, the guy has uh, got a PhD, he's also an ordained uh, pastor, uh, Lutheran. He wrote a whole book, and what does he tell you? You don't even know who wrote Luke. You know, this Uncertain is... Uncertain origin. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can read... Well, the narrative never identifies the author by name or personal history, traditions dated from the late 2nd and early 3rd century. No, uh, no, pay attention to that. That means the disciples of Jesus were long gone by that time, right? You're talking about 2nd, 3rd century, right? So that means even the narrative wasn't even written during the time of Jesus or anywhere close to him. Peace and blessings be upon him. And these are Christians writing this. There's not a Muslim or an atheist or any of that. Almost nothing is known about this person. Instead of our indulging in speculation, it is crucial for us to remember that both Luke and Acts are anonymous narratives, as all are of the Gospels. They make no claim with regard to their authorship, nor do they identify with any of the authors. You guys can go read it yourself. It's by a Christian, pastor, PhD. You know. Now, unlike that, we have people who have memorized the Quran, word by word, letter by letter, we also have many manuscripts that are around the Muslim world, right? Now, this is one, and I've taken this to the park before. What they've done is they've actually scanned the original manuscript, right? Of the Bible. Ri of the Quran. Oh, okay. There is no original manuscript of the Bible. The earliest complete is in the 4th century and so on. So, here you can see scans. This is the early Quran. No dots. No fatha, damma, kasra, no lines, no value. So... We have scanned these from different parts. There's one in Sana'a, there's others. These are from the earliest Can time. Can I show the camera? Go ahead, please. This is, uh, this is in, it's written, I haven't seen this, this type of writing before. This is the, the original Rasam Uthmani, they say, for the Uthmanic manuscripts, the, the writing that was used, right? Now, uh, again, I'm a researcher, so I go through this. And there's, there's obviously a lot of debate whether this is from the original uh, manuscripts that Uthman himself sent, which is an opinion that's mentioned here, and others who felt this was a copy of the original manuscript. But again, this goes back to the earliest times of Islamic uh, writing, right? Now, I wanted to show you... You know, if you can read that. When compared, when compared to the Mushafs of Tashkent, London, Paris, and St. Petersburg, numerous folios of which are missing today, this Mushaf can be considered as a complete copy. Thus, we see that the Holy Quran was protected not only by the readings of the Hufaz, but indeed by its script, and it was preserved just as it was revealed 14 centuries ago. These Mushafs stand as indisputable evidences. The sacred system reached the present day with the same purity as it was revealed by the Prophet, peace be upon him, and has always been on the agenda of humanity with eternal oral and written mess witnesses. Thus, it is natural to envy the believers in the system and the endless pleasure they receive from it. So you, you think a lot of this, this disagreement and this anger is, is stems from envy. It comes from envy. It comes from the fact that most people who have studied Christianity know, or even Judaism, right? The earliest... But Jews don't really seem to even debate. They yeah, don't even, they yeah. don't even well, engage in God. At least the Christians come and debate and have a... Or try to before stabbing, but they'll have a conversation. We did with have one that was interesting. A Jew? Yeah, we have a few, but one that was very interesting. And, and the video is online on the One Message Foundation channel. Um, this, this guy came out from the East Coast, and he was telling me about a Jewish practice, which I didn't know about. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit... Uh, you know, if there are kids watching, you may want to turn off right yeah um, but this is something that they practice so yeah it's a, uh, so so they they would have these uh, rabbis right. that would perform circumcision using their mouth the stuff for so they would take a little kids and put it in there right and uh, yeah and, and again when he said it was a Jewish person said it it's not me I'm not being anti-Semitic or anything like that. They told you this in a, a Jew told yeah, you this in a debate. Yeah, it's, it's actually online. The uh, video did he say it in a proud way or? Uh, in a, he no, was... he was he, he was condemning some of the practice of Judaism, saying, and he mentioned this, and he said this rabbi, and you can look this up, he actually gave herpes to I think it's hundreds or if not thousands of kids because he had herpes and he was putting there. I mean, again. So, so these practices, and this is not something we're making up. You can go to the One Message Foundation. You can find the video. You we're can watch in New it. York or Israel? Or, or, it was in New York. 
In Brooklyn, probably? I don't know which part of New York, which borough. But you can, I mean, I looked it up. Wow. It, it, the news articles are there. Rabbi spreads herpes to kids for putting their... I, why why perform a circumcision with your mouth? Why not? Why even? Okay, first off, why do it? <laughs> Second, why your? So we do have some Jews that come on and talk to us. <laughs> Maybe this is why they don't. I mean, but 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 the Jewish scripture also. Um, has and that's not in the that's not in the Torah, is it? It's not. Most of what you see in Judaism being practiced today is not in the Torah. It's not even in the Talmud. It's not in the Tanakh. And I mean, I have uh, the Jewish scriptures as well. Do you have uh, the Talmud here? I do. I mean, the writings, yeah, but this is the Tanakh here. I can show you. I didn't you know you were able here. to access it. It's so hard to find information on, yeah. the, on the, no, no. the The Tanakh is up there. You can show them that one right now. The, on the right. Yeah, right there. Uh, Talmud is huge here, but this is this is the Jewish English Tanakh. This is with the Hebrew. Can you read Hebrew? Oh, it has No, I cannot. It has English, yeah. I have Greek. And they read uh, backwards, manuscripts. right? Uh, they read right to left, which is the same with Arabic. Um, I have uh, all different types of Bibles. I have a Greek Orthodox Bible. I have a Catholic Bible, which has different chapters, right? It has chapters that are not in the uh, Protestant uh, used King James. Or Does the Catholic Bible have the same 42 and 22 year old error? They do. Yes. Okay. Uh, that almost. So that's all one thing Christians managed. can agree on. <laughs> there are errors. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, the some of the newer translations are taking those out, like NIV is taking it out, but they have other contradictions that are still there. But the manuscripts have them, you know. So I mean, it's not you can't get around it. You know. So uh, yeah, um, hand me that Yusuf on the right. Yeah. So third, it's third down. If it's not in the original text, why are Up, are Jews yeah. doing things like practicing circumcision with the mouth? This is the Catholic Bible. I don't, I don't understand how they're able to manipulate their original scripture. So, like so you know, the, the, the interesting thing about Judaism and the way it's being practiced today is you will find a lot of practices from Europe that have just become a part of their traditions, which are not from the religion. Right? Yeah. I was in uh, Palestine, currently occupied. Free Palestine. Uh, I love Free Palestine. And, uh, and I met a, a Jew and he was wearing a, a big furry hat. Yeah, I see right? a lot of those. Yeah, so I was just, you know, Orthodox, hardcore, like, practicing, you know. Uh, and I was just kind of like, I can't imagine Moses wearing that. Peace and blessings be upon Too hot. Right? Too hot. Like, it's not the dress. And he's wearing the big jacket and all that, you know. And Did he know, have the, the twizzle? He did, he did, yeah. Little twizzle. curlies, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I asked him. You know, I mean, I'm, 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 I like to learn. Like, I'm not trying to be, you know. I told him, hey, you know, you spoke English. I'm like, hey, where did you guys, is this from Moses or David? Peace and blessings, we love them. They're prophets, like, we love Jesus and Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon all of them, right? And he told me in, in Austria, there was a king that was trying to basically mock the Jews or to insult them, and he made them wear foxtails. It was an insult. And they kind of said, then let's own it. <laughs> and yeah. then this Austrian king's mocking became a part of their dress. So now it's a part of their religion. They're out there, orthodox, wearing these big old furry hats, which have nothing to do with Moses. It's based off some the... old European joke. Yeah. And it now has... it's become... Something so strange to me. There's a practice... Can increase the audio? I think you have to be too oh, trans guys. It's, it's, it's quite good. I checked the yeah. All right. It's an interesting thing. You can look this up. And I'm not making this up. You, you guys can all see it. They have a practice where they'll take a live chicken and... I'm not kidding. <laughs> and they'll put it over their heads. You know? And you're like, well, that's not in the Tanakh. That's not in the Tanakh. Do they sacrifice the chicken? Uh, I think they do afterwards, but I haven't seen that part. That is a, that's a satanic ritual. I, that's what I, apparently, I was reading the, the Hillary. No, look this up. Look this up. Go find Jewish practice live chicken overhead and you'll see it. Orthodox Jews doing this. Yeah, if you look in the Hillary Clinton emails, there's some speculation. I'm not going to say this right now because I don't want to end up uh, missing in a river. But that, that she worships. Allah protect you. If she, in her email, she she worships. Uh, she says that she was gonna sacrifice a chicken for the the god Moloch, which is the wow. god of child sacrifice. Um, it's some pagan ritualistic thing. So yeah, yeah anything when it comes like chickens, like sacrificial stuff. Well, so so that's the point. A lot of what we find in Judaism being practiced today is not based on actual scripture or the practice of Moses, peace and blessings be upon him, or that of David, peace and blessings be upon him. They're, they're innovations, mostly coming out of Europe, and now they've kind of become part of the day-to-day day -day of Judaism, right? 
Islam, alhamdulillah, we keep pure to our, our tradition. The way we pray, the way we fast, the way we do Eid, we keep it pure. That's why we condemn any bid'ah, any innovation. Mm -hmm. Anybody who tries to innovate, we condemn it. We say no. Like the Wahhabis. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Wahhabi is a whole different ballgame. What, what is the Wahhabi? Can you explain that to me? There's no such thing as a Wahhabi. This is a made-up term. Okay. Right? So those uh, Muslims who try to stick to the Quran, who try to stick to the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that don't want to bring music and dancing and, and these things into the religion, people start calling them Wahhabis. And, for example, nowadays in news, anybody who's sticking to the religion, they're like Wahhabists, you know, Salafists. And all these terms have been made up to try to divide the Muslim Ummah. Uh, Islam didn't start with Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, you know, who was a great scholar of Islam. Islam didn't start with Ibn Taymiyyah or Ibn Al-Qayyim. Islam is the religion that Allah revealed to Adam, alayhi salam, to Adam and every prophet. And what we find in the Sharia today from the Quran and the authentic narration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that's Islam. People that innovate, they try to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet. For example, Mawlid, this is an innovation, right? The Prophet didn't Christmas for... Christmas for Muslims, right? Right. Christmas and for Christians, too, is also a pagan holiday. It's a pagan holiday. There's nothing in the Bible that says anything about Christmas, but it's the most... Can you hand me this book? So it's like the number one celebrated uh, religion. history of common I mean, the number one celebrated holiday. For all the Christians watching, uh, I want you to go get this book. You know, you can, you can, you can get it from the library. An uncommon history, common things. It's not written by a Muslim. National Geographic Society has put this together, and you know, it says right here, as you can see it highlighted, that you can read from me. Christmas wasn't originally part of the Christian lit, uh, liturgical year, nor is December 25th mentioned in the Bible. In the 4th century AD, Pope Julius I chose that date as a church holiday, in large part attempting to give a religious cast to the Saturnial fest, uh, festivities. So, what? It's a, it's, it's a they're worshiping satanic... Because sat Saturn is satanic. Yes, and this is a pagan idol worshiper's holiday. Christmas is satanic? It is. Yeah. And everybody... Celebrates it every year? Go, go go, get the book and read it yourself, right? And all these churches that celebrate Christmas, find me. Here's, you know, I'm just They're celebrating I'm a satanic holiday. They are. And all, look, there's a video Sorry, I've got online. You can see uh, a well-known Christian minister that says that this is pagan. The tree, the Christmas, all of that is pagan. It's all idol worship. And it's it's all, all. Here's the Bible. Go show me the 25th of December or Christmas in the Bible. I think most Christians know that it has nothing to do. But So where does it come from? A pagan festival that was brought into Christianity to try to get the pagan Romans into Christianity. And today churches are out there celebrating paganism. I used to go to church every Christmas. Like Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, we would go to the church and celebrate. You know, this is the... It's crazy that the churches would allow that to happen, knowing if, if anybody who was, uh, who was a student of the religion knew that, that they would immediately condemn that and refuse entry. So if you're a Christian, let's see you be truthful and condemn Christmas. Go, come out and say that this is a pagan festival, we're not going to celebrate it. But they won't because they're not trying to... Follow the truth. It's just tradition. Yeah. Stick to it. They'll find some way to justify it. Right. They'll find some calendar that some old guy, and they were like, oh, we're going to put it back this way and that way, knowing. And again, this is why Pat Robertson, the well-known Christian minister, I've got a video, you can check it on our channel, where I've put video of him saying, this is a pagan festival, and then he's like, I'm still going to celebrate it. They don't care. <laughs> they, it's don't not, care. they don't really care about the truth, that they're more caught up in the tradition. Exactly. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, we stick to the Quran, we stick to the way of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, peace and blessings be upon him. We keep the religion pure. We're going to have Eid. You're going to see the, the way we raise our hands, the way we recite, the way we give the khutbah uh, after the salah. All of that, the way the Prophet did it. Peace be upon him. Right? This is why we keep our religion pure. We don't allow innovations. And any Muslim that tries to innovate in the religion, we will, we will condemn it. So no. what is the divide between the, the Shias and the Sunnis? Look, uh, I have videos that talk about the origins of the Shia and stuff, but let me just put it very simply. Right? The Quran says in Surah Al-Fatiha, in the beginning chapter, that every Muslim reads and every prays, that only Allah do we worship and only Allah do we seek unseek, unseen help from. Right? So, that, so, so that means we only seek help from Allah. The Shia, they will say, Ya Ali, 
Oh Ali, help us. Even when they're getting up, they're like, Ya Ali. Instead of saying, Ya Allah, they're calling, Ali ibn Abi Talib is a great companion. We love him. He's a great person. But we don't worship him. We don't call on him for help. The Prophet didn't do it. The companions didn't do it. Ali didn't do it. Peace, may Allah be pleased with him. Hassan, Hussein, his sons, we love them. They're the grandkids of the Prophet. They were righteous and pious. They didn't say, Ya Ali, help me. So you see, they've innovated into the religion. They're asking other than Allah for help. And this is shirk. This is not permissible. Right? And shirk is the greatest sin. It's the Islam. greatest sin. As Muslims, we need to unite upon the way of the Qur'an and the way of the Prophet ﷺ. No more Wahhabi and this label and that label. No, come together. We have the Qur'an. We have the authentic sayings of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Did, did Allah tell you to call on Ali? No, He said, call on me. Ud'uli, call on me. I will answer your dua. So as Muslims, we only ask Allah. We don't ask the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for help. We don't ask Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, for help. We don't ask Jesus. We ask only that one creator, the one that Jesus prayed to, the one that the Prophet Muhammad prayed to, peace and blessings be upon both of them. The one that Ali prayed to, that's the one Allah. And when the Shia have things like temporary marriages, even though the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in a hadith narrated by Ali radiyallahu himself, said that this forbidden, Allah forbid this in stages, like alcohol was made haram in stages, but it was forbidden by Allah. In Sahih Muslim, you can see the hadith, then we don't do temporary marriages. That's wrong. As Muslims, we don't date, we don't do haram, we get married in the halal. You know, if you need to get more than one, get a second, third, or fourth, that's fine, but do it in the halal. Right? But we don't, we don't go into those things that are haram. This practice of 10 minute and 10 day and 3 day marriages, this is not part of Islam. Taqiyya that all the Christians pre are talking about is not an Islamic principle. This is a Shia innovation. We stay away from all of that. So we, Muslims we condemn together. the Shias? We do. We condemn them. Not because they call themselves Shia, but because of those practices. Okay. We, we call them back to the Quran to worship only Allah and seek help from none but only Allah. So what was the, the story we were talking about in the car? Uh, you wanted me to remind you something with the in-laws, with the family. <laughs> I want to hear this is a good story. So, you know, when I got married, uh, I, I went to Pakistan to get married. And, and my in-laws, I love them. They're really good people, you know. Um, and when they were giving advice, it, it, was, it was a culture. Because I was raised out here, right? And I was raised in the hood. And I was raised in the body. And so when I got married from Pakistan, from a village, uh, it was a very different type of atmosphere. So when I went, my in-law sat me down, my father-in-law sat me down, and my wife was there, and he said, look, uh, I raised my daughter with full yani, hijab and niqab and all of that, and I raised her honorably, and if she goes there to America, because he didn't know about America, but he knew there was a lot of corruption, and she starts messing up there, it's your responsibility to make sure that she stays on the religion. He didn't... Like, I was shocked. I was like, man, this guy is not telling me, like, oh, no, you got to be, let my daughter do what she wants. No, he was like, look, and, and, you know, he's not like a sheikh or something, you know, but he was a very good person. That's beautiful advice. Then my mother-in-law sat with me, right? And I was, I was kind of like, you know, okay, she's going to be like, oh, it's my daughter, you know, let her do what she, no. She sat down, she turned to my wife. She said, look, you're getting married. And now that you're married, your husband is your world. You come back here to this house as a guest or may Allah protect you. But if you die and you come in a coffin, that's it. Otherwise, that's your house now. Make it work. You know, it's beautiful advice. You know, that's the kind of thing that makes a marriage work. You know, when you when you say, you know what, I'm in it for the long. I'm not just going to jump in and jump out. You know, the first fight, we're going to fall apart. No, you got to make it work. Right. And Alhamdulillah, I've been married. I don't know. Too many years. <laughs> uh, I got married, right? Yeah, I got married in 2001, so that 22 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, alhamdulillah. I got four kids, Alhamdulillah. You know, we homeschooled them, and uh, Alhamdulillah, they, you know, academically they're very good. My son Yusuf graduated 4.0, Alhamdulillah. He topped the state testing. I mean, not just, okay, from getting grades, but the state testing. My son Musa just graduated this year. I'm really proud of him. He was graduated with honors. They gave him like a special robe, you know. So, alhamdulillah, I got two young daughters. Kusama. Mm, thank you. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And they're all involved in the da'wah. You know, Musa, mashallah, he does our editing. He's our editor. Uh, Yusuf is involved in keeping up with the new Muslims and setting up the shahadas and all that. And this is, this is the way you raise the Muslim family, you know.
Inshallah, Brother Sneeko Very soon. will be married with a good Niqabi religious sister soon. That's the goal. And he's not going to be messing out any speed datings anymore. He's going to no. be getting... <laughs> no, it's a waste of time. I mean, it's good entertainment, but it's not very... No, no, inshallah. We love our brother Sneeko and everybody that's hating on him. Look, this is our brother. He's new in Islam. He's learning. You need, you need to cut the brother some slack. You know, you need to make dua for him, pray for him, that Allah gives him steadfastness and help a brother, our brother Andrew Tate. You know, this is just me sending out some salam to you as well. He gets a lot of criticism from, from Muslims online. You know, he does. And, and, and look, I, I don't watch a lot of that stuff, to be honest, but he's our brother in Islam. He accepted Islam. He didn't have to. He didn't get paid for it. He only got hardships from it. And he's sticking to it. Uh, you know, if he's sitting in bed reading Quran, great. Alhamdulillah. There's nothing in the Quran that says that's no, wrong. No, nothing wrong with that. It's better than him sitting in bed reading, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? right? So he's sitting in the bed reading Quran. People are like, oh, he's got his shirt off. So what? There's nothing in the Quran that says that's false. Nothing in the Prophet that's wrong said that this is wrong. Yes, we respect the Quran. We, we're, we have good etiquette. But if you're sitting in bed reading Quran, Alhamdulillah, you're reading Quran. So our brother Andrew Tate, you know, if you ever need any advice, support, we don't need to do it online. I'm not trying to get clout. We're here for you, you know. Our brother Sneeko, we're here for you. Anybody that becomes Muslim, I don't care if you're a YouTuber or a social, we're here for you. You know, we're your brothers in Islam. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, we have that brotherhood. You know, we're not here to be jealous. We're not here to judge. We're here to support. What were some stories from your your youth where you that maybe you stepped away from Islam and how did you come back? Because I'm sure everybody listening has times where they they start to doubt their faith and they start to to lose their connection to God. To be honest, I never doubted that there is a God and there's only one. Like I never, because I felt it. You know, you, 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 sometimes you're in a hard position and, and you start praying. And I'll tell you something funny. I was on a plane and I travel a lot for work. And I was sitting next to this guy who, started, who was an atheist. He started arguing with me, you know. Oh, you Muslim? Because I was dressed like this, you know. And he was like, oh, you know, Muslims this and there's no God and there's this. I started talking like, okay, where do we come from? And then the plane started like really shaking, like really shaking, right? Of course. And he's like, oh God, oh God, oh God. And I was like, hey, who are you calling on? You know, he goes, not now, not now. <laughs> there, is no, there is no atheist when the plane starts shaking, right? right? So we know in our heart there is a creator. We pray to him, even atheists. Even atheists, agnostic, they, they actually pray to the one creator. Even Christians, when it really gets down to it, they call on God, right? But me growing up, I never doubted that. But I was lost because I just didn't have an environment. Right? And there were times when I was shot at, when my friends were killed, that, that you know, it was stressful. You know, you, you go see your friend and his head's been split open, being hit with a crowbar. You know, it's not uh, something, just somebody you grew up with. Right? But I never, ever felt that there wasn't a God or felt that I'm not going to believe. No, I always, even back in the days when I would do something really bad, like bad, bad, I would, I would take a bus and go to the masjid. I didn't know any Muslims. I would just find the masjid and I would just go pray. And I would walk in dressed like a gang member. You know, Dickies and Pendletons and bandanas. And everybody would assume I'm not Muslim, right? So the, even the masjid would sometimes be like, get out! You know, and I'm like, I wouldn't even pay it. I wouldn't even really answer. I might be walking, got my lokes on and all that. And I would just go pray whatever I could because I had that connection, you know? My friends, you know, they were gang members, but, but they believed in God. None of my friends were atheists, you know? They were, they were lost because Christianity gave them this weird mindset where they would think, okay, I confessed, so my sins are gone. I believe in Jesus, so I'm going to heaven. You know, There's these ex-gang members called Victory Outreach, and they would come and talk to us. And we hated them because they were, they were crackheads. like They were heroin addicts, right? And they would come and they'd be like, Jesus will save you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 back up. Homie. <laughs> and they'd be like, you know, have you found Jesus? I was like, I don't know, he was lost. <laughs> so, you know, we'd be like, what do you mean found Jesus? You know, like, I, I know who Jesus is. They say these Bible. phrases that don't really make sense. Christianity today is all slogans. They'll say something like, Christ is king. Like, the king of what? <laughs> what did he rule over? <laughs> who was he the king of? He, he know, wasn't king. Like, he was never the king. They're, they're just slogans, too, right? F find Jesus. Like, Jesus, the reason for the season. Actually, no. Most <laughs> biblical scholars will tell you he was born in the summer. Right. He's not the reason for the season. Paganism, the reason for the season, right? Yeah. You know, that, but Christianity is all slogans today. It's all hype. It's all emotions. It's no. Most Christians that you sit down, you actually, in, in my debates, if you see the videos, 
you'll see, I'll ask them, is this the word of God with no error? They'll be like, yes, 100%. And then you start showing them, they're like, well, it's, a, <laughs> it's the words of men inspired by God. Wait, earlier he says the words of God, no errors, no errors, right? No, there are no errors. Okay, and I'll show you one. You have a lot, huh? <laughs> I've got about 70 something marked. I've got a hundred, I'll say. I'm going to write a book and I get some time when Sneeko kidnaps me and puts me in a, a cabin somewhere to finish. I'm going to put together all this research in a book and it's going to be free. I'm not going to sell it. It's going to be free for anybody online uh, to download and so on. This is in the New Testament now, right? In Matthew, right? The first chapter. Read here, verse 16. Okay. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. Now pay attention. Who, who is it? Jacob begot Joseph. So Jacob begot. He's the father of Joseph. Not of Mary, because some Christians will try to pull this trick. No, this is for Mary. No. Who, who's the husband of Mary? Right? Joseph, the husband of Mary. So who's Joseph's father? Jacob. Okay, good. What the? I thought Mary was... Okay. Yeah, so, same Bible. We're just going to go to Luke now. This is Luke 3, 23. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Who's Heli? Who's the father of Joseph here? Heli. Heli. Eli. Who, who's Heli? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? I've never heard his name. In the other, in, in Matthew, it says begot. And then again, Christians play tricks. Oh no, you know, these lineages, some of them skip. No, they don't, because you can go all the way back, right? So, in one lineage because these are made up bart ehrman who's an atheist but i have a lot of books from him he said look these were made up to try to connect jesus to david peace and blessings be upon both of them and that's why both of them gave different lineages they made them up right this is a clear contradiction who's the father of joseph right i'll give you a, another fun one this is in acts right here okay now this man purchased a field with the wages of inequity, inequity. In, in, in equity. Uh, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. So this is Judas. How did he die? Falling headlong and burst open. Excellent. So out. the money he got through it, and he fell, and his entrails, headlong. And that's important because Christians love to play tricks. Headlong means your head goes first. Right? You're in motion. You're not dropping. You're falling. Okay, now the same Bible, same Judas, I've got so many of these, this is in Matthew now. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. So now the first contradiction, in the earlier verse he bought land with the money. Here, he threw it away. He threw away the money, and then also he hanged himself. He, he hanged fall. himself. He didn't fall. His entrails didn't gush out. He didn't fall headlong. He hanged himself. It's completely clear. different. It's a clear contradiction right in front of their eyes, right? Now, for all the Christians out there, I want to I ask this question. Read this for me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father. Oh, this is Jesus, right? Yep. Yeah. Jesus said, uh, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. First problem that as I have. As you will. Well, First problem that I have is, who is Jesus worshiping? If he's God, who is he praying to? Yeah. If he's praying to the Father, and the Father doesn't pray to him, then obviously we have a hierarchy. They're not co-equal. Right. Right? But then Christians will say that, Jesus was man in God's form. Okay. So then he wasn't God. If but he is God. In, well, okay. arguing yeah, the Christian yeah, go ahead, go ahead. He's God in sent as a man. Okay. So as a man, is, is he God? Yes. So who's he worshiping? <laughs> God. If he's God, but he's, who's the, he he's just the form of God. He's Okay. So this form of God is no longer God then because he's worshiping God, right? Or is he worshiping himself? Well, it's, it's both, he's man and God at the same time. Okay. Does God know everything? Yes. Okay. You, I know this one. I know you this know one, this yeah, one yeah. right? So, 
for the benefit of others. I'm just genuinely being curious about it. This is your. There's mostly Christians watching. They're getting upset in the chat, but I hope not. <laughs> Look, if you're a Christian watching, why would you be upset? Look up these verses. Think for yourself, right? Uh, this is not an insult. This is this is reading literally from your book. I'm not putting any kind of no, insult out the there, truth. right? Here. Okay. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So only the Father knows the time. Okay, so my question here is, earlier you did agree that God knows everything. And here it clearly says, nor the Son. It's not even ambiguous. No, sorry. Nor does it say anything about Jesus on earth. Or let's say you said this was only when he was on earth. Okay, that means on earth he could not be God. You can't have a square circle, Right? Either it's a square or a circle. Either it has edges, corners, that makes it a square. If it doesn't, that makes it a circle. Right? Either you know everything and you're God, all capable, all knowing. Or you're fine. not. Yeah. Or you're not. Can't be both. So, you know, as you can see, we have a lot, a lot of these, you know, I mean, you know, people talk about, you know, uh, the Quran and all this stuff. And again, we're not, I don't sit here and do this in my living room only. I'm out at the park. I'm out there in front of people. I'm in New York. I'm all over the place. We woke up face to face. We're not just like little Sammy sitting in his bathroom making videos. You know? Why is he in the bathroom making videos? No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. Okay. Yeah. He's in his living room, your kitchen, trying okay. to get a sandwich. Go make me a sandwich, bro. What the? <laughs> <laughs> do something productive, man. You know? All right. So I don't know this guy. I have no disrespect. Uh, okay, another verse. This verse is Samuel. Samuel chapter 15. And now go and attack Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them. But kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Who, who's, who's this talking? This is God ordering the people of Israel to attack Amalek and utterly destroy them. Who's Amalek? It's, it's a nation that had uh, generations before. They're the same Semitic people. <clears throat> so the people of Amalek had attacked the people of Israel as well. Generations after, God is now ordering them to be genocided, nursing children to be killed. Kill right? both man and woman, infant and nursing child. Now, notice, it is not something about the nursing child, his future, or something they had done. This is a punishment being handed where genocide is being carried out. And this is something that, you know, uh, again, a lot of Christians are like, oh, it's Old Testament. Okay, well, who's the God of the Old Testament? Is it not Jesus then? If Jesus is God, then these are the commandments of Jesus. Right? I can't argue with this. I, I can't argue with <laughs> That's that. why you're Muslim. I, I'm trying to like <laughs> argue from the perspective of a Christian, but it, yeah. it doesn't make... It. And again, for the Christian saying, oh, you should bring a Christian. Look, this is not the first time I've gone through this rodeo, right? This is not my first rodeo. Go watch our channel. You'll see Christian preachers, pastors, apologists, all those guys being hit by the same stuff. And you can watch the videos. And for, the, for people in the chat saying Christ is king right now, what is he the king of? And, and see, this is my problem. He wasn't. How, he, how was, is, he wasn't the king. But at any how point. is that even a response to this? <laughs> Just saying, Christ is king. Christ is God. Jesus, Jesus is God. It's proof that they use slogans to slogans, try to. Slogans. Yeah. That's it. Now, but I not, want you to. I want you to read this here. If a man finds a young woman who is a virgin, who is not betrothed, and he seizes her and lies with her, and they are found Rapes out, her, basically. Then the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father fifty shekels of silver. <laughs> And she shall be his wife because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to divorce her all his days. So if you... Is this... Okay, in simple terms. I, yeah, go ahead. Astaghfirullah. He's saying if you <laughs> rape a woman, then give your... Give, give the woman's father. father 50 shekels and now she's your wife. And she has to stay your wife. You can't even divorce her now because you, you know, raped her. Does anyone in the... Like Christians watching, can someone please explain this? And these are the laws of the Old Testament that according to you guys... And it's a virgin you, too. If you rape yeah, a virgin, a virgin yeah, pay yeah. the dad 50 shekels. You're good. And now she's your wife forever. Right? So, so what I'm saying is, if you, guys, if you guys are Christian and you believe Jesus is God, then those are Jesus' laws. These are the laws of the Old Testament. These are God's laws. Now, this is a, one that I've used a lot and I'd like you to read for us. And especially those of you that are watching that are African American that know what a horrible Oh, this is the situation. slave one, right? Yeah. I've seen this one. Exodus. And if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod... Even a woman, by the way. Female servant. So that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, 
He shall not be punished, for he is his property. So, if you have a slave, a woman or man, doesn't mention what the reasoning was, any reason, there's no mention here, don't try to make stuff up, and you beat them with a rod so bad that they die, but they live a day, just a day. They live a day or two, you know, they, critical condition, they die a day or two later. There is no punishment. You shall not be punished because humans are your property. This is Bible. Go read it yourself, right? Then you guys talk about Islam. Come on, right? Come on, you know. This is, you know, I have, again, like I said, you know, we have, even if you look at biblical scholars like the, you know, this is the McCarthy Bible. They will tell you that these, uh, this is an interesting verse. Read this here. And, and this is from a study Bible. So don't think that I'm, uh, you know, making this up from my understanding. Kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known a man intimately. But keep alive for yourselves all the young girls who have not known a man intimately. So just kill every woman. Kill every man and any woman that's had Sex. intercourse. Yeah. But the virgins, keep them for yourselves. Right? Now, read the commentary of it. The commentary is that the execution of all male children and women of childbearing age ensure the extermination of the Midianites. Genocide. And prevented them from ever again seducing Israel to sin. Genocide. Uh, ma basically, and this is not like, oh, it was a flood or something. This is going in and killing them. But keeping the virgins for yourself. Right? This is in your Bible. And this is your, your study Bible. I mean, this is your evangelicals, right? Now, remember we read this verse earlier about a man finding the shekels? If a man finds a young woman who is a virgin and not betrothed, then he sees her and lies with her, then he either found out. It's the same one, right? Yeah, same one. But look at the Christian response. The response it. is, if the man forced, i.e. raped the woman, then only the man's life was required. Yeah. So now, if he forced her, then the man's life would have been there. But if he gives 50 shekels, now she's his. And, you know, for those who might be like, oh, seized her, this is rape. That we're talking about. And they're allowing 50 shekels to be a price for raping her. And now he has to marry her and keep her forever. At least 100 shekels. <laughs> they should correct it to 100 shekels. 50 is a little cheap. One of, the, one of the new Bibles might actually change it, you know. Let me show you something else. You know, it's interesting. Can you hand me the... Uh, At least 100 shekels. Up the gray Make Bible. Make it fair. Yeah, go, go right there, yeah. Now, this is the Joe Witness Translation. Okay. JWs. It's called the New World Translation. These are the knocking on the door Christians. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is the standard that's used around the world. It's King James. Okay. Right? Now, what's interesting, and I have NIV as well. Um, hand me the, the white and brown one in the middle. Yeah. This is, no, this is KGV as well. Um, let's see, where's the NIV? Uh, yeah, that's it. Sorry. <laughs> Good man, here's this is the NIV, right? What they have done here, welcome, Soda. Multi disorder, nice. I want you to read this verse here in Matthew, right there. Right. I'm sorry for father, yeah. Father who was in heaven, for even one of these little ones to perish. Now, what's what's the chapter and verse? Chapter, um, it's Matthew uh, 18, um, and then verse 12, or to verse 14. Okay, so go up to first Matthew 11. So for, for, what do you think? No, no, right there. There's nothing. Mm. <laughs> you see yeah, the verse? Matthew verse 11, um, wait, ma chapter 18 verse 11? Yep. Tells it exists. No, right here. It's just, it's just a star. I, wait, I want to show them. Sorry, just fact check. This is, this is the Jehovah's Witness Bible, right? The New World Translation, yes. If you look at 11, you see that, that orange sticker? It's just, there's nothing. It's just a star. 
Now, in the standard King James, Matthew, make sure it's the same verse, because this is, I'm not, and you guys, spot check it. Go home. I, I am, I'm showing them now, yeah. I mean. Matthew 18, 11. Matthew uh, chapter 18, verse 11. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Interesting. That verse was taken out. Now, why was it taken out of the Jehovah's Witness Bible? You tell me. Luke, right here, is it 49? Uh, I think it's under chapter 9, verse 56. 56. It? So they went to a different village. Okay. How did you, you find it? this? You must have... Oh, I've studied. I've studied the Bible. I've studied the Quran. I've, I spend my... Uh, a good amount of time with... Because I want to follow the truth. I don't want to just blindly follow something, right? No, this was Luke. What was the chapter and verse? Um, Luke uh, chapter 9, verse... 56. Right? 56. There you go. And this is the King James Bible. Yep. Okay. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Read both now. Where is the Son of Man there? Wait, it's 56? Yeah, right there. Uh, so they went to a different village. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. <laughs> and they went to another village. Go, go check if the same same verse. Go check it online. It you is. guys? I mean, it, I'm holding it. It is. Right? So now... Which one is the true Bible? Right? This is not a difference in reading. You know, this is not a difference in pronunciation. These are entire verses that are taken out. Salim's calling me a, a fellow Muslim who... Go for it. I call it. Salim, I'm, I'm live right now. Huh? No, no. I need you to go back and forth with this girl right now. Because I just probably fucking hindered her. About what? I'm not lying with you right now. I'm I'm, li I'm live right now with Sheikh Uthman. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How you doing? Oh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. How you doing, brother? He's a hafiz. Mashallah, you were a hafiz, huh? Yeah. Wa rahmatullah. Yeah. Mashallah. We need you to come lead taraweeh with us. Yeah, rahmatullah. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. All right. Talk later, man. Shout out to Salim, everybody. It seems like he's, he might have been drinking a little bit. I can hear in his voice. Drinking? I'm not sure. Adin, thank you for the 50. MashaAllah, super hey. beneficial collab yet again. Siko, ask him the questions you've always wanted to know. Um, Sway might not have the answers, but Sheikh has answers. Yeah, I've, 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 I'm asking him everything I wanted to know. Now, this is the King James Version. I, I've color-quartered between old and new, but don't worry about all that. But this is, this is the chapters. Okay? okay? The table of contents, right? Now, this is the Catholic Bible. Okay. Okay. I want you to find here Tobit, Judith, Sirach. See if you can find them there. Okay. So, uh, one more time. This is the... Um, this is the Catholic the Bible. Catholic Bible. Yeah. And now I'm here holding the King, King James. James. Yeah. What's the difference? Which one came first? Well, I mean, uh, up for debate, but both are based on manuscripts that are in Greek. Um, Catholics will definitely say the Catholic version was first, but in, that's not even the point. The point here is, here, you look at these chapters, they're not there. Okay, uh, Tobit 586. That's just a page number, but yeah, Tobit, so. Tobit, um, is it in alphabetical order? No, nope. well, I think that might be. Kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't exist. Judith, no. Sirach. <laughs> And you see, Baruch. these are entire chapters in the Catholic Bible that do not exist in the Prophet. So which one is the true Bible? Right? I mean, yeah, they're, they're, no. the Quran is stayed consistent for 1,400 years. Musa, hand me that Mus'haf up there that's sitting flat. Yeah, I wish you could see it. Well, I think we'll eventually we'll do a, a whole tour of the, the whole to. library because this is just covered in, in literature, wall to now, wall. One of the things a lot of Christian apologists and... You know, people that just, because we clearly show these contradictions and these clear things, we'll be like, oh, there's different recitations of the Qur'an. For example, there is Hafs and Asim, there is Warsh and Nafi'ah on how to recite, right? They'll be like, oh, those are different Qur'ans. For example, if you're from the East Coast and you say some, you know, you're from Boston, you say Baston, and we say Boston, or somebody's like, Boston, you know, how you all doing? Those are recitations. 
That's not different chapters. Every Quran in the world, I dare you, go get a Quran, show me one that's not 114 chapters, that doesn't begin with Al-Fatiha, and doesn't end with Surah Nas. 114 chapters, 30 Jews, the same Surah, this is the only Quran, one Quran. Different styles of recitation. Now, because they try to play these kind of games, this is a, a Quran we got from Kuwait, may Allah reward our brother Abu Abdullah from Utah that brought this to me. Um, here, look at this. The Quran is one. The difference in pronunciation and how you recite are listed here, right? So all those you can recite from the same Quran. If you go back to a Quran that doesn't have any markings, whether you say Malik or Malik, it's the same thing. It's how you stretch. Whether you say what Duha or what Duhe, it will be based on one Quran. So we have only one Quran that is memorized letter by letter. Challenge right now. All you guys, challenge. Christians, Catholic, Protestant, I don't care. Bring me a Christian that has memorized the whole Bible word by word, letter by letter. The Pope, bring him up. Sam, you memorize the whole Bible? All right? We'll bring you a hundred of fathers. Or just spoke to one. one <laughs> it just we had some, we got, we got, we'll, we'll come to the masjid tonight. You'll meet a bunch right. tonight in our masjid. We'll the protectors go, of the Quran. You go to Pakistan, you throw a rock, you hit 50 of them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you go to Egypt, you go to all these countries. People have memorized the Quran. And from the time of the Prophet, I want you to bring me Al-Itqan. There's a book. Uh, let me get it. Uh, Mawiyah, yeah. look up on top. In the Ulum of Quran, there's Al-Itqan. Some donos. We got uh, five from Muhammad W. Shame W. Shake with mine for all the Christians right here. God gave you a brain to think with. Go read your book and then see what really makes sense. Uh, and we're not hating here. You know, I'm, really I'm not, not, I'm it's not all about seeing the truth. One hundred percent. I'm not dressing here in a little nighty like hammer time and trying to make mocks and jokes. I love Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon him. Wallahi, I serve Allah. I love him, but I just don't worship him. Uh, Shake. Why does the Quran say Jesus was perfect from form by the Potter's hand? Jesus perfect and sinless, yet you are still intellectually dishonest to say that Muhammad is the better example of mankind. Gotcha. Don't run. Gotcha. Bring me the verse first. Where's the verse in the Quran? Show it to me, and I'll explain it to you. The verse that, that says that Jesus was perfect yeah, and Muhammad show me, wasn't? Show me the verse. Show me the verse. Look, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, was a prophet. Show me a verse that says Muhammad wasn't perfect. Show me a verse that says compares the two. Bring me the verse. I love Jesus. I'm not here to insult any prophet. I love them. I don't, we don't make mockery cartoons of prophets. We love Jesus. We love Moses. We love Abraham. We love Muhammad. Peace be upon them. Every prophet is protected from sin. I and mean, from things that are intentional sins. Prophets make mistakes in judgment. For example, Musa alayhi salam when he was breaking up a fight and so on. Now, for you yourself, you mentioned in your own Bible times when Jesus would get angry and so on, which you can consider a mistake. I'm not even going to get into all of that. We love the prophets. We love, if you believe in that verse in the Quran that you're saying, show me the verse first off so we can discuss with evidence, not just ideas. Then when the Quran says that Jesus was not a God, when he was a slave of God, a prophet of God, then you should believe it. That's what we believe. We have one more, I uh, just want to read this. 15 from... Uh, Project Axiom says, Shake, for Mark 13.32, is that the slave one? No, Mark 13.32 is that only God knows the hour. Only God knows the hour, only God knows the time, but the son doesn't know the time. Sure. He said, I was told the Greek word no, use it not about knowledge, but the knowledge to command. So Jesus cannot command the hour, only Allah. I will look into it, it hurts them more. So it's more support, so not only does he not know the hour, but he cannot command the hour. Look, I have the Greek as well, we can look into it, but either which way, it does show they're not co-equal, right? Christian doctrine is destroyed by their own book, right? Now, I want to show this. This is a book called Al-Itqan of Imam Al-Siyuti, the scholar. Of, and this is, if you can see in the, there's my notes. I don't know if you can see real well there. Uh, I can there focus you it. You can see my notes on the sides as well. So this book mentions about those documents, those companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, contemporaries that memorize the entire Quran. Al-Itqan, it mentions Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Bay ibn Ka'ab, Zayd ibn Thabit, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, right? Abu Darda, Abu Musa al-Ashari, then it continues about Abu Huraira, ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Sa'ib, 
and then also taking from Abdullah ibn Abbas. So here, these are documented. What I did is I went back to the books of Tariq of history and the books of Hadith, and I looked each one of these up, and that's my notes on the side. And I found more, all the way to 35 that are, I've documented here, with references to which book mentions them, right? Who are all companions that were documented to have memorized the entire Quran word by word, letter by letter, during the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Show us one person that memorized this Bible during the lifetime of Jesus, let alone read it. This wasn't even compiled in the lifetime of Jesus, peace be upon him, right? Go, if you're a Christian, go read Bart Ehrman. He's not, he's not Muslim. But go read about when the Bible was... Can you hand me... And this is again, I'm not trying to... Uh, on the bottom, you see where it says Bart Ehrman's books next to the Bible. Uh, keep going. Those two. Or those three, yeah. Those three, give them to us. Right? This how is, many books we have around now? Oh, no, you got a whole library. I'm going to show you. <laughs> right? Yeah. We'll, we'll take you for the tour. Yeah, the whole shower. tour. See, if you're a Christian and you really want to know and you don't want to take my word for it because I'm Muslim, go, this is Bart Ehrman. This is a book called Forged, How Jesus Became God. This is somebody who was a Christian, who was trained in a seminary, an expert on the Bible, Bart Ehrman. Go read. It says, How Jesus Became God, the original follower. He documents, and he's an agnostic. He's not Muslim. But he documents how the early Christians did not believe Jesus was God. And how this was something that happened over time. Misquoting Jesus. This, these are all books of Bart Ehrman. I'm not even a Muslim. right? Uh, uh, if you're a Christian, I love guidance for you. I, love, I want good for you. I'm not insulting. Not like you know these guys, like, like Sam Shimon. I don't watch his stuff. But you know, sometimes he calls people's mothers whores. He calls people... He, he, he's so filthy in his language that I don't know how any Christian would want him representing them. That's not the way of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. As a Muslim, I respect you. I want good for you. You don't need to debate. Go home, research, read the books, read your Bible, come to your own conclusions. Why is it that Jews do not, don't engage in conversation? I understand that Christians will get to a point and then you've even seen when you go past their breaking point where they can stab you, they threaten you, attack you they verbally, attack you verbally to try to slander your character. Yeah. But Jews won't even really, besides the, the rabbi who was biting the kids, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they don't really engage in conversation. Is it because Jews are an ethno-religion and they're more like, um, they, don't yeah. they don't want people to convert to their religion. They, they don't even, and with Muslims, like, that's the, a big reason why I converted to and why I encourage everybody in the chat to, to, um, to join Islam is because they're, they, we want everybody to know the truth. Exactly. We want everybody to know. We want every, we're accepting of everyone. Unlike Mormons, we're not trying to get you to pay 10% of your money. Even the zakat we give to the poor. 2.5%. Uh, but that's for the poor. It's not for the mosque. It's not for the imams. It's not for any kind of central body like the Mormons or the Catholic Church with all these paintings and gold that they have. i got to tell you a story about the Vatican later. Um, you can't say that on stream? I can. Okay. All right, it's kind of... Okay, I knew a guy named Martin Isa. I'm going to throw his name out. He okay. was an Iraqi Christian. He used to work with me. And he was Iraqi Christian, Chaldean, not Muslim. And, you know, obviously at work, I, when it's time to pray, I go pray. So everybody knows I'm Muslim. I got my beard and all that. I keep my pants above my ankle. I keep 100% as I could on the Quran and Sunnah. So this guy, one day he was telling me he was Muslim. I was like, yeah. And he was like, I'm like, what are you? Because he, he, he could speak Arabic. He's like, I'm Christian. I'm Iraqi. Then he goes, you know, even though I'm saying I'm Christian, kind of like Don, he goes, I'm not Christian anymore. I don't know why. He goes, I used to work for the Vatican. And I saw the corruption. Because you would get these Eastern European refugees, and they would take them to these saints, saints, who would be in these chambers. They would say, look, God has preserved them. And he's like, we had Freon tanks that I used to change. He was like, you know how much treasure, how many paintings are in the, in the bottom layers, levels of the Vatican? Nazi gold paintings that the Vatican has... You know, this is, this is a guy who worked for the Vatican. He was a translator. He spoke seven languages. And he told me this. He said, you know, I studied in the Vatican. And the reason Catholic priests can't marry is because the Catholic Church didn't want them, the abbots and bishops, to let their property go to their children. They wanted to keep it in the church. This is why they didn't allow them to get married. Mm -hmm. The early followers of Jesus, peace be upon them, they married. They had children. 
And this wasn't something with was a part of Christianity. When did that start where they started saying that priests cannot marry, uh, nuns can't marry? Uh, I don't know the dates. Is that in the Bible? No, it's not. That's what I'm saying. The early it's an, it, to me, that's an inherited. inhuman practice. Literally, yeah. if you say inhuman practice, that's what it is because humans and are then, designed to reproduce. And then you put them around little boys and wonder what happens. <laughs> Stuff. <like> that. <laughs> that's that's haram. You know, I had a I had a guy I used to work with him, Robert uh, at Pixis, as a company I used to work for, and he used to be Catholic, and he left he left religion because most people that are atheists that I run into, their problems not with religion, their problems with Christianity or Catholicism, right? And the reason he left, he said, you know, I used to be little. And I, you know, in Wisconsin, he was very Catholic area. He said, I used to walk to school, a Catholic school, between the parish and the whatever, the nun house or whatever they call it. And I would find aborted fetuses from the nuns having intercourse with priests and hiddenly, right? And he said, what a hypocritical religion, you know? And he left all religion from that. And I gave him that while I gave him a Quran and things. Uh, he read the Quran. He told me, I find nothing wrong in the Quran. I find it. He goes, but I just... The whole a lot of the Christians that I speak to that will criticize it, they've read the Quran, and especially like the guy you debated, Zerka, he said he's read the Quran, he agrees with all of it, but it's just, the reason that he believes in Christianity is because he sees Jesus and Christianity as a bigger threat under the satanic antichrist agenda. Well, so he sees the fact that Christianity is under attack more by the globalist agenda, that's why he believes it, that's why he says Christ is king. But when you read, any Christian who reads the Quran, they won't find any contradictions, they'll see that it's been consistent for 1400 years, and that they agree with all the practices and all... Everything that the Quran teaches, but they just can't culturally accept it because I, I think it's because it's been condemned so much in the West for the past 20 years because they've, they, there's been a lot of media lies. They'll yeah. say that Christianity is being under attack, but Islam culturally, even when you tell people like, oh, I became a Muslim, like, isn't that like the terrorist religion? You know, stuff up. <laughs> they've been programmed by all Look the... It, anti- and again, I appreciate the shout out that you watch my videos, uh, right? He's but a fan. He's a fan. Uh, I'd like to meet him. Maybe we could have some tea or something. Um, but, but I'm going to say this. You tell me this. Who was the only religion standing up against liberalism? Who, on, on a wide scale, they're standing up against the LGBTQXYZ agenda? It's Muslims. You won't see a pride flag in a masjid. Ever. You will never find a ever. pride flag in a masjid. You, you, recently, we had a debate with a Christian, and he was like, don't say anything about the alphabet people. I was like, I'm going to say whatever I want. I, I was in New York recently. <clears throat> One of the old historic churches had a big rainbow flag on it. Uh, right. You will see priests with rainbow stickers. Even the Pope. The Pope. He's, you know, you know. Abortion's the, good. Gay no, even homosexuality. He's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's trying to accept them in. Why? Because they're selling out wholesale. Muslims are the ones standing strong. Alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we condemn homosexuality. We condemn liberalism. We condemn all this idea of breaking down of the household. We believe in the structure that we find. And look, in the Bible, you know, Christians are afraid to read their Bible. But if you want to talk about the Bible, and, and if you're Christian... And, and you, you have a platform. I want you to go on your platform and read this. All right? this Nick Fine says, I want you to, to read this specifically. That's the, the one person you have. Is. You've debated everybody else. Every other major Christian uh, YouTuber content creator. I've seen you debate them. And I have to see them not be able to make you fold in any sense. But, uh, well, they, Nick, they, bring it on. I'm here. I mean, he, he doesn't want to do it. I, I think in a healthy way, it'd be, it'd be a really good debate. Bring it. Okay. But if you're a Christian... I just want you to read from your Bible. That's all I'm saying. On a platform, like on TV, or I want you to just read this verse, okay? There you go. Leviticus 20.13. Leviticus 20.13. If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. This is the Bible. Kill right? gays. Huh? Kill gays. In, in, in again, two words, you could say the Bible again, says kill gays. I'm not saying this from me. That's the Bible. Want, I don't want the media. I'm not homophobic. To... Well, I mean, you know. Well, 2013. I'm, I'm not scared of that. I mean, <laughs> well, there are gay people. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not homophobic. Right. I, I don't accept that lifestyle. But, you know, that's my freedom. Now, this is just in the Bible. Uh, go, if go, a man go, lies go, with a man as he lies with a woman. Go to your church. Go to your pastor. Ask them to give a sermon about this verse. Go ahead. Try All it. the churches that have rainbow flags in there have drag queen story hour in the church. I want them to read that verse. I mean, but they always say that this is the Protestant or whatever. This is like the Catholics believe this or this, this is, is an Orthodox Bible. practice. <laughs> this is in every Bible that you find, whether it's Christian, whether it's Protestant, whether it's all of that. But the, is, he would agree. Nick Fuentes would agree that like it, yeah, by that verse. But, but let's see how long he can speak. Is there any verse in the Quran that says kill gays? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what is the punishment for sexuality we can discuss, but th- there's not a verse like this. Uh, although, I mean, again, to be open, of course, the Quran does condemn homosexuality, and we do without without any fear of anybody. Um, now, uh, 
I want you to read this if you're Christian in your church, or even if you're Christian, I just want you to read this with your kids. Go ahead. This is the New <laughs> Testament, by the way. Okay, this is Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, 23 20. Uh, for she lusted, for she lusted for her paramours, whose flesh is like the flesh of donkeys, <laughs> and whose issue is like the issue of horses. What? Who she? Who's she? Who she? Lusting after uh, men whose flesh uh, is like donkeys. <clears throat> privates are like that of donkeys, and their sperm coming out is like that of horses. Uh, what? Uh, who is this woman? You, you read this with kids? Who's this woman? Uh, it's in the Bible. I mean, this is a story, but well, it's in the New Testament actually. But, uh, but the point there being, how are you gonna read this with kids, right? Now, for me as a Muslim. I don't believe this is the word of God. And this is not the words well, of maybe, God. Well, maybe me. it's the flesh is like the donkey, like the body of a donkey. No, no. You can read the Greek. It's about the <laughs> male organ. And what about the issue is like the issue of horses? It's maybe it's certain. the issues like the political issues of the horse. No, we, we can look up the study Bible if you like. <laughs> political issues of horses? <laughs> what if he has right. an issue with gender theory? <laughs> uh, horses have issues with gender theory? So wait, horse issue? Yeah, yeah like sperm. Bumble clash. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> go 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 home as Christians. Look up your study Bibles. Look it up. Okay. This is this is what you want to teach kids. Okay. Well, uh, I want to close out by um, seeing how you what what you often do in your videos and when you give dawah, you get people to to take their shahada. Um, I, I would like to to take my. I don't know if I if I properly did it i don't I think i did it in arabic so i would like to let's do it if you would if i could have the honor if you would do it it will be my honor okay. and guidance is from allah alhamdulillah allah guides but we always want to be the means of that guidance so arabic first or english first arabic first because i've done right. english but ashadu ashadu al al la la ilaha ashadu al ala ilada ashadu ashadu al al la la Ilaha, ilaha, illallah, illallah. Wa ashhadu, wa ashhadu, anna, anna, Muhammada, Muhammada, abduhu, abduhu, wa rasulu, wa rasulu. Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar. I know you already Muslim. I still gotta give you a hug for that. I'm done. How's my Arabic? Excellent. Excellent. Now, inshallah, as an invite to you, as my brother in Islam, not because you're a YouTuber or any of that. You're welcome to come and learn. I'm here to teach you. If you have questions, I'm here for you. Again, our brother Andrew Tate as well. If you have questions, we're here to support you. Don't worry about haters. We're here to give you that understanding. Whatever you want to know from the Quran, from authentic narrations of Prophet, peace be upon him, with chains all the way back to the Prophet, we're here to help you. Where can we find you, Sheikh Uthman, and One Message Foundation? Uh, You're so not making any money from this. I'm not making any money from this. In fact, I don't even care if we get views or subscribers. It doesn't matter to me. We do want to spread the message of truth. So if somebody goes there, alhamdulillah. If they don't, alhamdulillah. Allah knows my work, and I expect my reward only from Allah. So we have uh, the One Message Foundation channel on YouTube. Uh, there are many channels that are on Instagram and stuff, even though I think... Do we have a One Message Instagram? Oh, yeah, one we message. do have an official one, right? Uh, but you can find us on Instagram uh, and so on. Uh, again, we don't care about views and subscribers and we're not making any money off this. We just want to spread the truth. If you're a Christian, if you're atheist, if you're Muslim, if you want to know the truth, you can watch the videos. Accept it or don't. I'm not forcing anything on anybody. We have also the Masjid Ribat channel. That's our mosque's channel where we have lessons for the Muslims and, and anybody else who really wants to get more in depth. Inshallah, tonight you're going to be with us at Masjid Ribat. So we'll be we'll be having a lesson. We'll be yeah, for the Muslims in San Diego, uh, where could we? Masjid Ribat. It's in San Diego. You can look it up. It's off of Seventieth on Saranac. Uh, hopefully, we won't have any white supremacists try to kill us or something today. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're ready. And if they do, bring it. You know? We're ready. But uh, anyway, inshallah, we'll be at Masjid Ribat tonight. And uh, once again, uh, One Message Foundation. You can check it out. Watch the videos yourself. All the people rapping about Sam, go watch the video when he was there in person. See how he acted. All the people that talk about Hammer Time, go watch his videos that were he was in front of us. Anthony or anybody else that blah, blah, blah. Go watch the videos. You've seen it. You, you'll see the full video beginning to end. Alhamdulillah. We're not here insulting anybody. Uh, I, I love to be a means of guidance for all of you. If you become Muslim, it's not going to help me. 
it's going to help you in the end it's going to be you that benefits from it as a muslim i don't drink i don't smoke i don't i don't do adultery i don't do any of that that's the kind of lifestyle that makes me want to be the best Uthman I can. He doesn't I even listen to music. Like that was, Alhamdulillah, I do not. I was wondering, I asked you all, like, come on, you listen to music, Because right? I'm not going to lie, I still sometimes listen to music. You know, it's okay. P people it's have, not okay. It should, should, you know. People have mistakes. People have shortcomings. And, and we don't expect perfection. I have things that I make mistakes on. I sin, I do things that are wrong, I ask Allah for forgiveness, and I have hope in the mercy of Allah. I'm not going to expose sins. I'm just going to say that, look, I'm not perfect, and I'm not claiming to be, right? But I know my Lord is so merciful that He can forgive me without killing anybody, without killing Himself or His son or anybody else. If you ask forgiveness, Allah forgives. Our brother Sneeko, you're welcome to San Diego. You're welcome to our house. You're welcome to the community. And, you know, whatever mistakes you made in the past or in the past, you're doing great. And inshallah, you're going to be the best version of yourself. You're going to be a good example for the people. We're here to support you. And if you fall and you make a mistake, it's okay. You go back to Allah, you ask for forgiveness, you keep getting back on it. And Allah is so merciful and so forgiving that He can forgive you without having to kill anybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, and it's been a pleasure. Man. We have a lot of great content coming. I'm going to be here for a couple more days. So I, I want to go over here. I'm going to start doing IRL streams. Uh, so chat, stay tuned. Make sure to follow the new Discord, the new Telegram, link in the description to stay updated to this stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Show some love to the brother, man. Alhamdulillah. Salam alaykum.